<laughs> hey. Hello and welcome to what? Outlander's Guide to Ladaria Session 21! Ah! Hey. Hey. Happy New Year! Yeah! Happy New Year! Happy, happy! <laughs> it's a new year, it's a new session! Bloop! How are you all doing? Ah! <laughs> 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 I agree. Ah, uh, indeed. Okay. Well, uh, how about we just jump right in uh, with today's recap brought uh, to us by uh, by Jason? Would you like uh, Would you like uh, background music? Uh, if you have something fitting. Otherwise, well, I have maybe the usual. Is this fitting? Sure. I, 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 okay. <laughs> if it isn't, I can pause it. It's okay. Maybe just pause it. All right. Okay. Then you will be so, carrying this on the sound department. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, so we're just going to kick off with a special news report from an alternate timeline. Uh, Winter, you're going to be the anchor. I'm just going to play you on, all right? Good? Uh, oh, okay. All right. Uh, so news music. <laughs> Winter, that's a cue. Come on. Oh, oh. Uh, good evening. This is check your facts with the best of both worlds. Alternate modern timeline news. Uh, top story tonight. Five suspects in connection to the ongoing Jade Council investigation into former arch-cleric Gul Borgak are at large and on the run in Ladaria. While the manhunt is ongoing, our team managed to contact them via Worldpoint. Now for the first time, they are ready to share their side of the story in this exclusive interview. They met with our own... Du <laughs> du dubious... Dubious source? <laughs> Uh, this morning, in an undisclosed location, 43 miles south of Simlielon. <clears throat> this is Dubias Source <laughs> checking in. <laughs> Exhausted. Confused. Scared. That was the atmosphere aboard this crowded cargo vessel now occupied by the fugitives. The small family that operates it had no idea what they were in for when they docked for what should have been a routine cargo load. <laughs> now they're making their return trip under the watch of Plurna's five most wanted. All highly armed and dangerous. <laughs> but just who are these fugitives exactly? Pip! <laughs> Interviewing Pip. You're by far the youngest of the group. What led you to getting roped in with all of them? What? I I'm up here. I'm up here in the crow's nest. Can you talk louder? You're the youngest! What led you to getting roped in with all of them? Well, my mom and dad left me, and I had nowhere else to go. <laughs> so, these, these people took you in. Would you say you were bound to be with them? Uh, Are you being kidnapped? <laughs> No. Okay, so your band of, let's call them companions. Actually, does your group have like a name, something snappy to refer to all of them? Um, I don't think so. <clears throat> the level of organization amongst them was shockingly low. <laughs> For now, it seems they were stuck with the moniker given to them by the public. The Fox Murderers. <laughs> Pip, do you see yourself as a longtime member of the Fox Murderers? Are you in this for life? What? The Fox Murderers? As I understand, your group murders more than just the fox. They enjoy, and they enjoy murdering a variety of animals like birds and fish and crabs and wolves. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's not the first time we've seen how this particular individual mistreats his animals. Earlier today, I interviewed 
a hardworking orc man whose home was occupied by the fox murderers for two days. He told me a story about how this one would not stop barking at his dog. <laughs> he went on to say he was chasing her around, sometimes sniffing her. She never got any peace, end quote. No doubt a traumatic experience. He also said how this one kept a, an animal of his own, a mangy rat that he likely never groomed. He never saw it again after the first night. He said the last thing he knew of was it threatening him with a rock. <laughs> Animals are one thing, but how do these, how are the fox murderers people skills? Tekka! <laughs> <laughs> now we've all heard the story at this point, but in the interest of fairness and balancedness, I think it's time we heard the other side of the story. Why did you violently attack those unarmed scientists with a with a chainsaw? A handsaw. <laughs> <laughs> New sensationalism. <laughs> Who must rid themselves of ill is not afraid of the dark. Okay, so apparently he's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> hold on one more thing we, we have about a dozen witnesses saying that you tried to bury three people alive would you say anything to that hmm. roads do not tell the elephant what lies ahead yeah okay so anyways <laughs> After personally investigating the aftermath of the Arya excavation site massacre, there was one heartfelt <laughs> testimony I just couldn't get out of my mind. He, he said, he just kept shoveling and shoveling and shoveling. I was about two feet away from him as he very, very slowly began to fill the hole. There was nothing I could do to stop him. Worse still, he was just so rude, all because he didn't like the way I greeted him with customary uninvited groping. <laughs> the more I learned about these fox murders, the more I came to understand how hell-bent they were on leaving a wake of de devastation in their path. The lingering question I was left with was simply, why? What was this group's ideology? What guided them? Mr. Pont Pontificus. <clears throat> so you're a priest that abandoned your faith to begin practicing arcane magic. That is, of course, seen as the ultimate blasphemy against the Jade Council. What's the story there? Uh, saying that I abandoned it is it's a bit of a stretch, but it is not too far off. I, I simply moved on to greener pastures. Okay, so you harbor some deep-seated resentment against the Jade Council. Let's try to get more into that. <laughs> okay, that is a bit of an overstatement, but I do not agree with everything that I do. Okay, good, good. So... Now, after the fox, should we consider the other gods' days numbered as well, as it were? Uh, if you had your way. If I were to have my way, uh, I believe everyone's days should be numbered. The one with the number of oh, days. No, stop right there. That's exactly what I needed. <laughs> so you abandon your god for elf magic. Uh, now, what exactly is your mission now? You know what, I don't think this is very productive, but, uh... uh can I plead the fifth? Does the fifth exist? <laughs> you know what, I think I got what I needed. You know, this I'm story that you may have. <laughs> <laughs> this storied professor, despite his... <laughs> uh, despite his eccentricities, almost exuded an air of dignity that was lacking from his companions. Digging a little deeper into this frogman's history, however, quickly showed how shallow that dignity truly was. My suspicions were first roused after an interview with the head elf at the excavation site, one Kirlia. After the fox <laughs> murderers left her ruins in shambles, this is the man who stayed behind to verbally harass her, <laughs> allegedly demanding that she recognize his superior intellect and that she smile more. After speaking with her, I've contacted over a dozen more women who have been exposed to this Pontificus Alley knock. 
all with nearly identical testimonies. With such an eclectic mix of narrative wells, one's left to wonder who's who, to whom it falls to wrangle this chaos. Who would this group call leader? A likely candidate may be the phantom that serves as this group's muscle, a Moon Watch war veteran by the name of Brooke Hayabusa. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> Brooke, do you see yourself as the leader? Uh, I wouldn't say so. I have some experience where others don't, but... Uh, so why are you wearing the seed of Akanoth? Uh, I... It's a fifth. <laughs> no, you're, you're wearing it right there. It's written on the front of the amulet. It says seed of Akanoth. <laughs> really? <laughs> Can I look at it? Does it actually say that? <laughs> so, after murdering the fox, your group has now successfully kidnapped the only child of Akanoth. So, what is your ultimate plan here? <sighs> Same thing we do every evening. We have you on record saying that you intended to roast and eat the seed. Is that a <laughs> threat you're just leveraging against the people of Plurna to satisfy your own ends? Or... Does your barbarism truly know no bounds? Yes, to both. Okay. So I think it's fair to say without hyperbole that you are a money-hungry, bloodthirsty lunatic, yes? Uh, how many days has it been since you last killed someone's loved one and cut out their teeth? <laughs> <laughs> he couldn't days? answer. <laughs> he couldn't answer because he knew, I knew, the truth. My interview with one devastated Harry Ladarian led to a revelation too graphic to share on the air. It did lead to one positive note in this story, however. The man in question is, in fact, actively plotting his revenge, following the fox murderer's trail all the while. He assures us that his ret retribution will be equally gruesome to their crimes. Finally, someone to root for in this story. So the sun was high, and my welcome on the, the keelboat, that's what they're called, was wearing thin, but there was still one fox murderer I knew I had to interview. The one who started it all. The half-elf with a checkered past that no one had heard of until just a few days ago. Talix Moyery. This man <laughs> of mystery proved somehow difficult to find even on this tiny boat. After asking the youngest Janazi crew member I was stonewalled, she proceeded to hide her face, saying, how would I know where Talix is right now? I haven't been following her around or, or anything. <laughs> It was clear that she was only that she it was clear that she feared retribution for cooperating. Clearly, this was the most fearsome man of the group. It was only after asking asking her father, who had his own choice words to share that I won't repeat here, that I finally found him hiding suspiciously among some crates below deck, writing on a suspicious piece of paper. So here we go. So Talix. What is that you've got there? Oh, oh th this, I'm, I'm just writing a letter. A letter to who? Oh, just, uh, just my, uh, just a bird. You're writing it to a bird. Can, can I help you? <laughs> what, what, what's that say there? What have you written so far? Wait, wait, please don't, please. You don't need to read, look. Look, if I just let you take me to jail, will leave me leave me alone here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, red beaks! Uh, I, I should really you should really go. Why not be safe? <laughs> and so I was oh, And so I was forced to leave under threat of violence. A fortunate turn of events for this elusive farm boy. Or perhaps fortune had nothing to do with it at all. Though my time with them was at an end, I managed to catch one last thing as I exited the craft. Talix Moyery commanding the enemy red beaks. I came to the fox murderers in a good faith attempt to allow us to better <laughs> understand them. But if there's anything to be understood about them, it is simply this. That their threat to the good people of Plurna cannot be underestimated. Dubai's source. The Bopwamped News. Okay, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well done. Don't let me do that again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll talk in five oh, weeks. Wow. Uh, uh. I'm 
gonna pass out. <laughs> My posture was terrible that whole time. Ugh. That scream scared me. <laughs> I had to brace myself for it. I was like, Am I ready to try to do this? <sighs> All right, here's your Dubai inspiration. Dubai. Nice. Du du dub. Dubai. It should be Dubspiration. Dub. Dub. Yeah. Dubspiration. Here you go. Yeah, Dubspiration. There we go. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we all know what happened last session now. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Yeah, good. Yeah. An objective account of events. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so back in the universe where device <laughs> is not on the ship. <laughs> oh, <clears throat> we're gonna need the grid. And oh yeah, Austin, you missed like the final part uh, of uh, of the session last time, so I'm, I'm sure you're fine now. Here you go, I'm gonna put the grid here so it's nice and visible. And uh, uh, what we're gonna do is that we're gonna start with uh, Talix, uh, who had prepared his, uh, um, not spell, um... Channel Divinity. Not snapping, is snapping us as a term, but yes, he has prepared his channel divinity. CD. Uh, <laughs> CD. Uh, so we're going to start with uh, you doing that, and then we'll roll initiative. All right. Uh, well, quite simply, everything... Wait, I, that one's far away. I'm not within 30 feet, am I? Can I move closer to like the center where I can try to get all of them before I do this? Ah, uh, yeah. All right, so I'll jump. Oh, I'll jump down here. Is that thirty feet? Uh, oh. looks like it. Yeah, it's thirty feet. Okay. So yeah, all of these four need to these ones. <clears throat> yeah, I need to make a saving throw. A uh, wisdom save, I believe. Oh, wow. Um, I actually. Forgot to have my dice on the desk. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, bring, bring the music back. through. And the music will kick in in a second. The music will kick music. in in a second. <laughs> okay, wisdom you said. Yeah, DC 13. So yeah, Talix holds up his amber and uh, he's already asked Pip to uh, to be ready to speak something for him. Okay, so we but have. Let me see if Talos this works. Talos is just going to uh, ask if they leave us in peace. And tell the other. Does it show up if I put it here? Yeah. All right. I'll just use this one. All right. So we have three failures and one success. Okay. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Go leave us in peace! Pip translates. <laughs> All right. Ooh, quack, squack, squack. <laughs> yes, just like that. <laughs> no, it goes. <laughs> oh, right, sorry. I'm not doing that right now. <laughs> my mouth hurts <laughs> enough. <laughs> then um, I'm going, well, Pip. while I go fetch my dice, I'm going to ask for everyone to roll initiative. All right. Hey. I have a sick sleeping girlfriend. Yeah, music. I can't read at the top of my lungs. <clears throat> For our land. I think it was a mistake to tell Winter to turn off the music because it made the silence a lot more painful. <laughs> <laughs> no, you did great. Yeah, it was really good. Who's fighting for the land? Red Peaks or us? <clears throat> nice music. Yeah. This is good. It's different. It's like a. It's a sea shanty battle music. Definitely feels like a modern JRPG kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. Like, I love like that, that feel. Did you guys ever play Lost Odyssey by any chance? No. no uh, uh, actually, hold on. I, I might actually have that in my Steam library. I get it mixed up with another one. Uh, Is that the one I, with the with the violin? <laughs> 
Well, no, I don't think question. there's a violin in the stuff. plot, if that's what you're asking. I'm pretty uh, sure there's violin and music. Okay. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 never mind. I just looked at Lost Odyssey. Okay, no, it yeah, was the other one. It's about uh, yes. immortals. Anyway, I, I quite liked it. But it's, it's pretty old. If, at this if you're point, into JRPGs and violin, hold on. <laughs> so this is a really good one. Uh, it's like a little older ish. It's like about as old as Lost Odyssey, probably. Maybe a little bit newer. A missing uh, Brook. Brook. Brook? Dennis? What? Did I'm missing Brook's initiative? initiative. I did not. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that Are you still what? playing League of Legends right now? <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> it's called The Last Remnant. Oh, okay. <laughs> Oh yeah, I think the last, honestly, the last remnant, whatever, last remnant. If you haven't played it, I, uh, I recommend it. It's really fun. All right. Wow, Ooh. look at you with twenty decks. Thank you, thank you. Doesn't really help, but thank you. I think it does. Do you think so? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> After playing Vigil, I'm pretty sure twenty decks is pretty nice. It's it's uh it's helpful. Pretty okay. Good. So, just looking over your um, your channel divinity, uh, charm <clears throat> for one minute. Uh, da, 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 da. It is friendly to you and other creatures you designate. Okay. Mm. And yeah, just like last time, through the use of Pip's uh, uh, speech, uh, you asked them to. You said leave us leave alone. Us. Leave us in peace. Yeah. Leave us in peace. Okay. Uh, Tekka, it's your yeah, turn. Te Te <laughs> One who's saved in pieces. <laughs> <laughs> Tekka leaves the head, stands next to the railing, and readies for an attack if any bird approaches. Bonds. Okay. And sir. Brook? I will actually do the same. I will hold my attack action till one of these birds comes into range or attacks us. Yeah, Texas. All right then. Um, it's the turn of the red beaks. Um, with this flying speed, um, these are uh, these will turn back and immediately be off, just way out of the boundaries of the map. Um. Oh, wait, hold on a second. Let me put this back. Um, yeah, they'll fly past the ship. Uh, just over your heads. Uh, just high enough to, like, go over the ship without uh, uh, hitting anything. Uh, almost, almost basically, like, not... Just continuing the flight that they were taking originally, uh, and just moving forward uh, as the rest of them also come in. Um, one of them unaffected by Talix's uh, and uh, and Pip's request. Um, so, the way um, that the red beaks approach and move and attack seems surprisingly coordinated for animals as this one comes for the largest uh, among your group, Brook, um, that will let uh, you take an opportunity attack. <clears throat> they are just one tile too far from uh, uh, Tekka for this one. All right, all right, all right, I'll take it, I'll take it. They're going what? for our equivalent of a red beak. <laughs> Tag. A 21 hits? Oh. Mm -hmm. Ooh. 14 damage. <laughs> Brooke, as soon as uh, uh, one of these giant birds comes uh, close enough for you to slash at it, you take your opportunity. Uh, you open up a gash uh, on its uh, on its underside, uh, and as uh, blood begins spilling upon you, uh, it 
<clears throat> attempts uh, to slash at you with its talons. Well, that's a natural one, so <laughs> that's, that's a start. Good. Um, and then, after it slashes at you, uh, it continues flying, and it's gonna do like a little circle like this. So that's gonna be an opportunity attack from also Talix and Pontifex if they want to take it. Uh, I won't. Yeah. <clears throat> Talix is not going to uh, be attacking. He's just going to keep his orb out and his amber and try to uh, prepare another... preparing to cast another spell. Okay. And you'll see <clears throat> that as the ones that were a little bit further uh, away also come down and swoop... Um, swoop down on Brook. Oh, sorry. Uh, they all seem to be doing the same thing. They all seem to be targeting him. Uh, so this one also comes over, uh, tries to scratch him. That's uh, 19 to hit. It hits. For a whole... Oh. 10 slashing damage. And keeps on flying, taking this curve, which would trigger Tekka's opportunity attack if he wants to. And again, Pontifex, Talix, and Brook. Uh, Brook took his. Uh, yeah, Tekka will just kind of swing. All right, go for it. Nineteen hits. Right. Is this uh, number five? <clears throat> Eight bludgeoning? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah that's what yeah. you get. Big tokens. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this one on Talix. Yeah, that is a 12 to hit? Um, that will not hit. Okay. Uh, Talix and Pontifex not taking opportunity attacks? Is it, is it uh, moves away? Right. Nope. <clears throat> okay. And uh, 30 feet of movement. Oh, God, this is gonna happen every single time. Pontifex. Um. Yes. Uh, uh the, the 16 to hit? Uh, yes. It is? Or wait, uh, I didn't use my opportunity attack because I was saving my reaction in case I needed to shield, so I should uh -huh. have known the number. I, I would have casted shield anyways. Okay. So no, it does not hit. Uh, yeah, magical energy just surges forward at the last moment to protect Pontifex from the talons and just, like, scratch against this invisible barrier. Um... And then the bird like flies off, and you can that you can see that they're all in, in the process for like circling back for more. Um, and that's all for them. Uh, Vasilian, the only. Elven member of the crew, uh, with her swords drawn, she was ready. She was ready to begin slashing, but then um, she took a step back when Talix requested them to, and watched in awe as the closest, most of them, uh, Redbeaks, started to just uh, uh, like gave up on the attack and flew over the ship. Um, let me roll this. Okay. Um, and as she gets over here, um, like she seems about to be saying something to Talix, but then she changes her mind and seems to be, uh, she points up ahead, um, in this direction, roughly, and, uh, uh, squints and says, there's more coming! Uh, she is, uh, readying, oh, wait, 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 she has a crossbow. 
What am I doing? She has a crossbow. Ah, uh, she can shoot this one. And hits. Alright. Uh, it's Quick's turn. Hey, listen up, you big bug-eyed birdies. These people are under my protection. And uh, Squeak is going to leap off the ship, transform into a raven midair, and fly uh, up in this area. Okay. Oh. Bloop. Roughly where Brooke is? Roughly where Brooke is, Okay. Yeah. And um, that's it. All right, Pip. And Pip is just going to uh, call out to the birds in in bird language uh, and say, "Please stop! We don't want to have to hurt you. Can't we just talk to your your handler?" That's it. And dodge action, I guess. Uh, okay, Pip. Um, the the squawking of the red beaks uh, uh, returned uh, to you from uh, from like all of them as they all sort of re reply together. Um, they all yell at you. Um, you will be seeing our handlers soon enough. Uh, Talix, your turn. <clears throat> uh, Talix is once again going to call upon Vakana to uh, help him reach out to these creatures. He doesn't have any more channel divinity, but he does have animal friendship. And he's going to cast that at second level so I can target both of these red beaks here. Ooh, all right. What do I, do I need to roll? Yes, it's basically the same thing. Uh, wisdom saving throw. DC uh, 13 for both of them. If, if history proves right, it probably won't work because their intelligence is too high. Oh, crap. You're right. I forgot that it was different. Yeah, is, is there intelligence for or higher? Yeah, it is. Crap, I already knew that too. I just forgot. That, that's okay. Uh, you can take it back. Um, mm. Okay. Let's say... Talix is going to try to make a lasso. <laughs> yep. Yes. <laughs> He's worked on a farm, so experience. He knows how to make lassos. Do you have? Yeah, everyone does lassos. Lasso, on lasso farm. making tools. I've got a rope. What? That's lasso making tools. He, he just seen a Fair. knot. Um, Are you proficient huh. in rope? I do not have a tool proficiency in rope, unfortunately. So I'm not sure <laughs> how to. Do, what do? How about since you have six seconds to get it done, um, we call that a sleight of hand check. Um, if, if you're not proficient in it, just add your proficiency modifier anyway. Oh? Wait, so add a proficiency modifier to sleight of hand? Yeah, if you're not proficient, I don't remember if you're proficient. Yeah, just make a dex check okay. for proficiency. Yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, oh, right, that's... Okay. Unless, Unless you have expertise, expertise yeah, <laughs> yeah, then you keep the expertise. All right. Yeah, Talix makes lassos like all day, every day. <laughs> <laughs> That's the majority. Of whips out a rope and like backpack. bites it off with his teeth at like <laughs> a perfect ten feet and just <laughs> in a blur of hand motions, you see the most beautiful flip knot lasso you've ever seen. Don't get spooked, Pip. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, I have one of those. Uh, okay, what are you doing with your newly made lasso? Oh, well, I, 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 I think that would be action. my whole action. Yeah. yeah. Do you have anything else to do in your turn? No, but maybe... Would you let me use that as an opportunity attack later? Like attack with the lasso? To uh, yeah. Yeah. Maybe right, like a, cool. treat it like a net. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's a good way of putting. I, I was wondering what the what the heck I was going to do with it, but yeah, like, it was like the same treating it like a net. Uh, purpose. All right. Um, I can look that up. You can move on for me for now. Okay. 
Um, uh, Pippa can hear Theodomir stepping uh, closer behind him, and all of you can see as this uh, um, wave reaches up from the river, uh, water just spiraling upward toward this red beak uh, and uh, trying to snatch it by one of the legs. Oh, Jesus. Uh, and misses entirely. Um, the red beak being just too fast for it. Uh, um, easily dodging out of the way of uh, the of the watery grasp. Uh, Pontifex. So are we killing them or no? If we have a choice, please no. <laughs> you don't have to listen to Talix. <laughs> <laughs> If they attack okay. you, don't let them kill you. Yeah, Pontifex is, uh, uh, I guess I'm going to uh, ready a spell. He's going to ready the uh, heroism spell. Uh, yeah, he's going to ready the heroism spell at second level. He's readying it? Correct. What's the trigger? Uh, uh, when a bird gets within uh, uh, within melee of Brook or Tekka. Okay. Anything else? Uh, that's it. And that leaves us with Nind. Um, who was asked by her father to, to, to hide, uh, <laughs> but she will be here in the back. Uh, can I put her here? A little bit further. There we go. Um, and similarly, hold on. What's a what is a ah, low game? The distance. Thirty feet. Perfect. Uh, and similarly, you see this uh, this water appearing, um, like f floating upward against gravity and trying to grasp the the most injured. Uh, the most injured red beak. Uh, who fails his saving throw and. Uh, uh, you see the, uh, the the bird's flight being suddenly interrupted, and it gets like dragged under the water. Oh. Um. Before we move on to Tekka's turn, um, seconds ago, Vizilian had pointed something in, in uh, on the horizon, and uh, uh, as it gets a little bit closer. Um, it, it catches uh, a ray of sunlight and all of you suddenly are just like your attention is drawn to it as you see, as you see something uh, shimmering up in the sky. Um, mm. You realize right away uh, that you are looking at something mechanical that's flying up in the air and approaching you <laughs> that appears oh, no. to be in the shape of a cat with wings. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Don't trust <laughs> them, no. <laughs> Oh no! Uh, from over here. Oh, it's much smaller than I thought. It would be. For some reason, I was, I imagine like an Tressum albatross. Ah! <laughs> 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 All right, let me. Here we go. Wait, did that? Oh no, that's perfect. Hey, it, it rolled at twenty-one actually. Um. Oh god, that's a little weird. I had to happen on the on initiative twenty. Uh, so I guess Tekka, <laughs> it's you. Uh, okay, so Tekka takes his blanket out of his backpack and begins climbing up this uh, rope ladder. He prepares an improvised action for whenever a bird is a close visit. Die sister. What is the action he's preparing? Do you need to know? Ah, uh, yeah. I need to know the okay. trigger and uh, yeah, the action. All right. So when one of these birds are in close vicinity, he is going to try and blindfold them with this blanket. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> yep. All right. You're like you partially asked. up on the on the ladder. <laughs> yeah. Like he's... here. Oh, wait, 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 I actually have, uh, um, ooh, I don't know if it will work here, uh, but let me try. Uh, I actually have some new tools. <gasps> new tools? And uh, we have this little thing. Do you have a platform? 
Uh, yeah, it's a platform, but uh, uh, look, you can change like how high up you are on it. Nice. The state's cool. So let's see if it nice. works. Hey! Very oh, cool. wonderful! Very cool. That fills me with joy. All right, Brook. Um, <clears throat> where is the uh, mechanical tressum? All the way here. And in fact, I let oh, me copy I know this. I see it. Okay, okay, I see it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's actually like way higher up. <clears throat> You know what? I think I will just stay in my position and ready in attack for if anything comes close to us again. Sure thing. Uh, which is just about to happen. Um, well, you guys are currently not uh, seeing these. Oh, that's really messing with my frame rate for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I just wanted to measure something. No, that's <laughs> fine. I just I've never seen this actually like <laughs> dropping my finger. Yeah, it's but... really oh dear. Okay, maybe I shouldn't use that. That yeah, I, what's, what's, it's what's never happened tool? before. I notice, I notice right. every time we move it, it redraws all of the uh, writing on the board. Maybe that's what's doing it. Dang. Oh, what? I don't even see any of the writing on the it's, board it anymore. Starts, it flickers every time you move it. Yeah. It so it's draws. all Austin's fault? Well, so. Wow. For some reason, drawing this line causes all writing on the board to refresh. That's I see. Crazy. Maybe drawing. that's why we've never seen an issue before, because we didn't have, like... Yeah, that so much, much crap on the board. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's really drawing it every time. That's so weird. Uh, uh, sorry, I moved it. Did you get the measurement you needed? No. Uh, but <laughs> we should probably just not use it. <laughs> yeah, just just use your mini. If we just turn off the line that it draws, it'd probably be fine. We don't really need the line, do we? Turn off the line. I don't know if I can do it right now. I think we probably have to script it away. I, I can't. Yeah, I can't do script. Sounds yeah. confident. Uh, all right. That uh, what was happening with? Oh yeah, red beaks. Um, I moved the doze out of the way. This one is currently out of anyone's view. Uh, I need order. Twenty. Ah. That's the same one I attacked before. Uh. I don't know, maybe? No, you, you were the one who dealt 14 damage, right? No, the one you attacked is currently underwater. But this one has been hurt. By Tekka. Alright, Can all right, I right, do my uh, spell? Uh, oh. Uh, ah, yeah? yeah? Uh, I'm gonna cast Heroism. Uh, I put it in the chat earlier that I'm actually just doing it at first level. Okay. Uh, I misunderstood how, it's, how it scales. Uh, so... Well, uh, Brooke, you have heroism on you, um, so you're immune to Frightened, and you get, uh, uh, hold on, which, is this, I don't know if this is a cleric spell, or a, this is a cleric spell, okay, this is my cleric modifier, uh, uh, it gives you plus three temp HP at the start of each of your turns, uh, and also because I just cast a spell on you, uh, you can make an opportunity attack. Woo! Nice. Does that mean it's dead? Order cleric? Is that, uh... a <laughs> Um, does an opportunity attack require that he takes up his reaction? Uh, yeah, it will use his reaction. Uh, okay. it's, it's, it allows him to make an attack with a weapon as, as a reaction. Mm -hmm. That's fine. He was already holding an attack, so I was just checking if he could get, like, two attacks out of it or just one. Oh, oh, that's true. Oh, well, whatever. I already did it. That's fine. Go for it, Brook. Do I get like does does the bonus health each round add on top of each other? Uh, temporary uh, temp hit points and never overrides yeah. itself. Yeah. Right. All right, I'll it take it anyway. Thank you. Take your opportunity attack, Brook. Yeah, I will. You sound like one of my nibblings getting Christmas presents. Oh! <laughs> oh damn! Oh, Twenty. There it is. What is nice. it again? I rolled twice. Uh, yeah, uh, twice the dice. Twice a dice. Yeah, double, yeah, double damage dice. Cool. 
Oh, so uh, I'm so it's so good, so gay. And fourteen stole a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's go. All right. Oh, okay. Um, your blow is uh, uh, almost deadly. I uh, hear the screeching of this creature as the blood pours over you, but it still proceeds uh, with attempting to attack. Yeah, you try that. <coughs> uh, plus 22 to hit. Oh, man. All right, he tried. Uh, for eight slashing damage. And then he moves. Uh, he's moving away from me now, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Yeah, I might as well try. I'm going to try to take my attack of opportunity against him with the lasso. Ooh, lasso. Uh, should I add proficiency or no? Yeah, I'm not proficient with a net. So uh, right. They, I, I wouldn't do this for attacks. Um. Yeah, no, don't add your proficiency. This seems about right. as improvised weapon as it gets. <laughs> yeah. It does say it's a ranged weapon, though, so I guess I use yeah. dex. Eighteen? Eighteen hits. Okay. So, a large or smaller creature hit by a net is restrained until it is freed. It can try to free itself with an action, but that, that's it. Uh, okay. Hold on. Restrained means it can't move, right? Restrained okay. also speed means zero. its speed is zero, and when a flying creature's speed is zero, they, they drop. Nice. I mean, tell us um. to hold on. He's not gonna... Talos is going to try to, like, pull him in. Pull him in. Um, hmm. Let's uh, picture it like this. Uh, if if that's okay. So normally, again, uh, restrained means zero speed, and zero speed means that a flying creature is uh, falling. Uh, but, like, if you picture it as you're having caught it by, like, one of the legs, it would okay. still be trying to fly. It's just, like... It can't gain any more distance, but it wouldn't like drop to the water, into the water. Yeah, now it's like I'm holding a violent balloon on a string. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, it is a violent <laughs> balloon on a string. Uh, but yeah, it's it's stuck in this position, basically. All right. Um, all right. So we've done two, five, um, then six and sec and seven circling like this and like this. Uh, uh, and I should, just in case you want to use this. Uh, yeah. In addition to it being able to free itself with its action, uh, others can attack the rope to free it if they wish. Okay. Yeah. Loop. On Brazilian, we have a pretty terrible miss. Uh, hip, does a 13 hit? Uh, yeah, it does. Just hits. Oh, wait, I was dodging if that uh, changes ooh, anything. Oh, you're right, oh, you're yeah. right. But that's higher. Haha! -ha. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, nine slashing damage from the Talons. Ouchie! Wait, it continues this way. Um, would Pip like to take an opportunity attack? Um, hmm. Would I like to take an attack? I don't have a melee weapon, <laughs> so no. <laughs> You're not gonna punch the the, the bird. That's I'm not fine. going to punch a bird, especially <laughs> not after that interview. <laughs> ah. you just had a terrible nightmare last night about somebody like accusing you of all sorts of horrible things. <laughs> we really need to change our group name. 
<laughs> Ooh, um, Vizilian's first hit on this bird. And then squeak. 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 Mm. Uh, all right, before I move, is this, is this Tresson considered small? Um, this Tresson... Oh god, I'm sure I have it somewhere here. Are you gonna speak um, with small beasts? <laughs> it I can is speak with all beasts. Now. Considered small, yes. Okay. Um in that case, uh, Squeak says, Alright, I'll leave this one to you. And we'll fly over the uh, red beak here and we'll move exactly sixty feet as a raven right next to the mechanical tressum. Way up there. <laughs> Here you go. And we'll hold a grapple action uh, until Pip casts a spell. Okay. Uh, moving hmm. on to Pip. Uh, Pip glances over the side of the ship, uh, holding his side where he just got scratched and is going to point a finger up towards this mechanical tressum and uh, will whisper some arcane words and cast Hex. And we'll give it disadvantage on strength checks. Ah, okay. Uh, or should I do ath or should I do acrobatics? Hmm. Acrobatics is <laughs> probably <laughs> a test. Pro yeah, uh, let's do dexterity. Give it, give it disadvantage on dexterity checks. Yeah. Okay. And and then the squeak tries to, to grab it. <laughs> yeah, and then squeak. Uh, you know. As a, as a raven is going to try and like grab it with his talons and just says, How about round two, you mechanical son of a. <laughs> <laughs> um, right, ravens are tiny and you can grapple a creature that is one size larger, right? That's why I asked. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, so they both have disadvantage, so it cancels? Is that the deal? Or? Oh, no, you, you can. You can oh, just no grab grapple. Yeah. Okay. Like right, the, cool. the the limit is just if they are more than one size bigger than you. Um, Squeak's so strength is trash though, so. <laughs> <sighs> All right, I right, roll your. Uh, did you did you roll already? Here we go. Okay, well you have to beat the five. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait! I'm going use to use Squeakspiration. Yes. Oh. This time, Squeakspiration. All right. You're in the. Uh -oh. <laughs> I like that it's already. The one. into the tower. Into the tower it doesn't count. <laughs> oh, okay. We Wait, never mind. Maybe it will be better than a five. <laughs> yeah, let's hope because I don't think a five wins. Five doesn't doesn't beat it, yeah. <laughs> oh. oh my god, that was a roller. Coaster. That was terrifying. <laughs> Two, four. Sixteen. <laughs> Oh, okay, <laughs> so I have a bag with inspirations. Here it is. Um, we are again in that weird situation where a grapple means zero speed, which means falling from the sky. Mm -hmm. um, but with another flying creature holding it, I would still rule against it. That's unless, okay. unless the squeak wants to like let himself drop. Uh, Squeak is actually fine with that because, yes. yeah. With falling? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Well, that would happen right beach away party. then. Uh, yeah, beach party would both end up in the water. Sploosh. And sploosh. I'm just gonna set these aside. Uh, anything else on Pip's turn? <laughs> As he sees um, the squeak and the machine just plummet into the river? Well, let's see. Hex was just a bonus action. Mm -hmm. So, oh, uh, I rolled a dice on D&D Beyond for no reason. Um, <laughs> How dare you? How dare you? Pip will cast Mind Sliver on the red beak that just attacked him. Mm. Uh, so that's a intelligence saving throw. Uh, 
16. That succeeds. <laughs> okay. Is that it? We'll just, uh, I think he'll just back up a bit. Yeah, all right. You bump, you bump uh, uh, into Theodomer and just like get past him. <laughs> Talix, uh, you have caught yourself a red beak. Mm hmm. Um. So. Oh, sorry. Um, one, one moment. Uh, Pip is backing away. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, can you just roll me a perception check? Talix or Pip? A Pip. Sure. Have our cats had lunch? No, they um, ate late breakfast, but yeah, I was planning on feeding them at our break. Maya oh, is no. letting me know. Um, <laughs> so. <laughs> well, all right, after my turn, I can get. Sure thing. Okay. Yeah, uh, Pip, as you begin to back away, you bump into Theodomer, uh, which like makes you turn around uh, and you cover the rest of the distance actually looking this way. Uh, and as you're looking away from the rest of the flight and onto this side of the, of the ship, uh, you see something in the water. Uh, a small makeshift uh, raft uh, approaching your ship with uh, uh, four people on board. What? <laughs> ah! ah! <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see, like this. All right. Uh, you have time to wait. Squeak is not with you. Nope. You can't tell anyone. <laughs> <laughs> I squawk at them aggressively. <laughs> oh no. They might, speak, they might speak the language of their own birds. <laughs> oh no, there's two Geralts on that. Guys, we're dead. There's what? <laughs> there's two Geralts of Rivia on this thing. Oh my god, <laughs> so there are. <laughs> Cameo <laughs> appearance. <laughs> I hadn't noticed. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> across the room. These are the models I'm working with. Uh, <laughs> and the, the Skyward Hilarious. Sword antagonist, Girahim. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, Talix, your turn. Okay, so seeing the uh, <laughs> what's befalling my comrades right now, I'm gonna. Just leave this red beak where it is for a minute and keep holding on to it. Okay. If I open my other hand, just reach over and uh, touch Brooke on the shoulder, and I'm going to cast Cure Bones at second level. Ayy. Just do what you have to, Brooke. Oh. All right, so... 2d8, let's go. Mm, 12. <clears throat> that's good, that's good. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, you're just gonna stay there for now and uh, hope to maybe do something next round. <laughs> yeah, nothing, <laughs> else, nothing else for this round. Okay. Nothing else. You literally gave me half my HP back. Okay. Cool, cool. <laughs> Alright, moving on All right. to Theodomer. Um, da, da, da. Yeah, he's within range. Um, to do more of his eh, water attack, number two, however many. Uh, he keeps missing. Wait, no, that's not a miss. What am I talking about? It's a save. Hold on a second. Well, okay, never mind. I take it back. It is a. Uh, um, this red beak also choom, disappears into the water. Um, they are moving. And Pontifex. Uh, uh, the, the red beak directly in front, the, the one in the net, is that the one that, that just got chopped, uh, by, um, by Brooke? Yes, this one is, uh, um... Very, very injured. 
at least 14 hit points strong. Okay, and this <laughs> other one, six, out here on the side, is it? has it also been injured? Six has been hurt by Vizilian once. There is like a little crossbow bolt sticking out of it. Um, it doesn't seem to be a, a deadly injury. Okay. Uh, is that within range? I think. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, and Pontifex is going to uh, toll the dead on uh, Red B number six. Uh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it needs time. to make a 14 wisdom save. Ooh. Um. Oh, I have 13. Uh, if that. Mm -hmm. So it's going to take this many. Come on, big dumb. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Baby, go. <laughs> what? I rolled a one on a d12. Oh, I think he's like trying to line it up, and this lassoed bird is just squawking and flailing. His yeah, face. like, like he just right with his rocket. <laughs> he gets slapped by one of its wings. <laughs> he's saying the incantation. He gets his feathers in his mouth. <laughs> Good enough. <laughs> He's trying to make goat noises, and it's just gargled. <laughs> Anything else in your turn? No, I didn't mean to touch this. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, who, one of these people had a ranged weapon. Right? Um, v v Vasilian, Vasilian has been shooting with a crossbow. And you've seen both Theodmer and Nind um, using, like, manipulating the water in the river to, like, grab these these uh, birds from a distance. They're doing, like, spells, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the spells. Okay. okay. Uh... Hmm. I feel like I can make someone kill something right now. Uh... Mm -hmm. Yeah, let, let's do it. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cast... Uh... Healing word uh, on Brook. Uh, Let's go. Will, yeah, which will get you that attack. Just any time I target an ally with a spell, which of note, it doesn't have to be helpful. <laughs> if I fireball you, you can hit something. <laughs> fun, fun fact. Uh, so you're going to heal uh, 1d4 plus 3, so minimum of 4. I think if you full heal anyway. Then you have to roll. He's 68 oh, hit points down. This many. Ooh. <laughs> okay, I'll You're so wild. Well. <laughs> A minimum of four indeed. <laughs> Kill that bird. <laughs> okay, okay, me attack. Oh. Since it's restrained, <laughs> you have advantage. Oh, thank God. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> <I cursed>. <laughs> <laughs> 18 hits. If you rolled another one, I was going to lose it. <laughs> I was going to click this flip button so fast. <laughs> I see some interesting rolls in the chat. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah. Um. Uh, Talix, <laughs> your your rope. <laughs> um. Uh, you're you're now holding a, a dead bird, uh, dangling what? from your rope. Uh, as why? Brooke has successfully slain. Uh, why uh, go for that one? What? <laughs> Why attack the one that's already on a rope? <laughs> that's <laughs> just what am I supposed to go for? What? To send a message. 
What the fuck? What the fuck are you doing? Job. <laughs> Sorry. I'm gonna be honest, I didn't, even, I didn't remember to walk on a rope. I, just, I didn't want to be the one to do that. It's like so I went for the other bird and just made me kill this. <laughs> Yeah, that was a little heartless, bro. You know, I gave you the opportunity. <laughs> so, Winter, I when, I, when I asked you how things were going and you said, oh, they're going fine, and gave me the thumbs up, Brooke was in the middle of murdering <laughs> the bird that I captured. Right? <laughs> uh, uh, uh. You're kind of a monster. Is it too late to say that my attack was non lethal? Is it too late now to say sorry? He just clawed the bird. He says, the water. Yeah. I didn't kill it, the water did. Yeah. No one will ever be able to tell. Uh. He flipped his sword around and just broadsided it. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, okay. it is too late. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, there's one more, there's one more. Alright, no, no, no. alright, alright. All right. <laughs> would, would, would Brooke have attempted not to kill the bird? I, I don't think he would have. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's too late. Well, now instead of having like a very angry balloon, you have a very heavy, deflated <laughs> balloon. <laughs> Oh, God damn it. Wait, are you holding on to the lasso? Are we just dragging its corpse <laughs> along the water? No, it's I it's getting... Really like it on part. Anyway. You... I can help you pull it out! What's the end up to? I um... can revive it! <laughs> I'm just making sure... Oh wait, no, 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 there's... Oh, God. Okay, there is motion with this ship that I'm like, not bothering with. I guess that would be like, too much work. Um... Understandable. <laughs> So, like, you know, like, the Tressim and Squeak are, like, getting closer to the ship as the ship is moving forward, but, uh, just, uh too much, too much. Um, so Nind, uh, is uh, maintaining, uh, um, the concentration on this red beak, uh, um. Okay, which stays underwater. Uh, where's my thing? All right, so uh, moving on. Uh, somewhere a few dozen feet away from the ship, uh, a machine shaped like a, a wind cat uh, and a little imp shaped like a raven um, are, are fighting under the surface of the water uh, <laughs> with the... Where did my Tressim side block go? Uh... The Tressim will attempt water? to... Ah? Huh? Oh, yeah. yeah. Will attempt to break free from the grapple. Oh, yeah. All right. Um, which is still going to be a disadvantage for it. For it. So I make... Athletics still, I think? Yes. Um, okay, nine. Here we go. Hmm... Should I use my other inspiration? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Did you roll in that one? Yes. Yep. Oh my god. <laughs> if you look other at the a series of ones. I'm blowing my inspirations on this one. Squeak deserves a win. <laughs> bouncy, oh bouncy, 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 <laughs> bouncy, bouncy. Oh, 11. Okay. 11 beats on inspiration dice. <laughs> <laughs> they are made, made to of give you... Yeah. <laughs> They're clearly made for dramatic effect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They like have their own built-in drum roll. <laughs> <laughs> um. Uh. Yeah. They are still both of them underwater, and uh, um, the Tressim is unable to resurface. Um. On initiative twenty. Uh, oh no! I locked the boat. Yeah. It's oh, this thing <laughs> makes it over here. Uh, and Pip, you're watching as uh, as a group uh, of uh, Itarava um, begins to to board the ship, 
and ah. the strange the 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 um so the the Itarava, like you they're easily recognizable from other from other Itaras uh, as they are the only ones that have like feathers that just naturally grow like out of the sides of their heads uh they still have ha they still have hair in the middle but like the sides it's feathers um, and they have locks that are alongside like the outer side of their arms. And as they begin to climb on board, the strange thing about them uh, is that they are completely uh, quiet. They're not talking, they're not yelling. Um, but despite not speaking a single word, you see them like gesturing here and there and they seem to be um, to be perfectly in sync as they begin to board the boat. Pip is just like aggressively tugging on the rope that Tekka is on. <laughs> uh, oh boy. Alright, this is gonna be slightly annoying, but yeah, that works. And these ones are like in the process of climbing the boat. Eh. Eh. Okay. Ah. Ah. Ah, I did it! Those are for killing men. <clears throat> oh no. Okay. And we'll get to it on their turn. Uh, Tekka, you feel you feel the the, the, the ropes you're, you're climbing on uh, just be aggressively shaken. Yeah, so Tekka tries to maintain balance, turning around, seeing all these people. Uh, the Oterava boarding the ship. And will leap from the rope. And aggressively try to blindfold the closest. <laughs> yeah. Yes. yes. <laughs> okay. How do I treat this attack? <laughs> Great question. Um. A grapple check. Let's see. That's a. Okay, we can do grappling rules. Um. But like the effect instead of being a grappled effect will be just uh, this person being blinded. Well, Got it. yeah, yeah. It's suffocating. Suffocating rules in D and D are silly. Yeah, it takes like twenty minutes. Yeah. You remember to <laughs> you remember to lace your blanket with chloroform first, right? Uh, well, <laughs> I could lace it with perfume, but that's the perfume you made. I was just thinking the oh. same thing. <laughs> We're about to find out what these flowers can do. That would give me an instant <laughs> headache. <laughs> okay, so you rolled an acrobatic. Uh, no, wait. Athletics, because you're grappling. Oh, you're right. It's athletic. Yeah, yeah, that's even worse. No, it's a six. Okay. Oh. Perfect. There's a chance. Oh. I want this to succeed. <laughs> but, uh, Didn't he prepare I, uh... this for like a full round? He should have advantage or something. <laughs> He had it ready this whole time. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> he was prepared for a bird, though. Not a... <laughs> Sorry. Bird, bird blindfolding bird stance, not yeah. man blindfolding <laughs> stance. Actually. <laughs> different Very different mentality. Uh, against this, uh, this uh, woman's 18. Uh, um, <laughs> it's just not enough. She no. She's too tall. Let me, let me resize all of them a little bit. Eh, eh. Okay. Um, anything you'd like to do with your bonus action? Uh, I mean, it's just pretty awkward right now. <laughs> 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 um, but I mean, uh, I guess I should do a bonus action, otherwise it's going to be a problem. <laughs> Monks have some good bonus actions, right? What did I even do? Because this isn't even an attack. It's oh, grapple. Right. So... Um, grapple. Grapples replace an attack rule. So, like, you technically took the attack action if you have something right. that triggers off of that. Okay, then, uh, yeah, we're just gonna do some punches then. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> because, uh, yeah, attack would not have the core staff ready at this time. <laughs> oh. Oh boy! Buddy. Oh no! <laughs> it, it's okay. He's got two fists, so let's try again. <laughs> yeah. Eighteen hits. 
Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you can punch this woman. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, so I think this is just like a, a punch to the ribs, probably. Okay, number three. Um, as you... <laughs> you try to get her first with the sack. Um, and she just like... This, this tiefling <clears throat> just hops down from above. And she... <laughs> um... She leaps back and then to the side, dodge, dodging his first attack, and then the second punch just straight to the gut. Seven. Um, and this is the first time when you actually hear their voices as she, you know, she she grunts in pain. Mm. Uh, anything else on your turn? Behind us! <laughs> <laughs> Good, thank you. He says while looking at the f <laughs> red peak swimming away. It's not swimming. <laughs> <laughs> it is swimming and it's fine. I swear it was alive when I hit it. You're right, it is <laughs> fine. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm reassuring. <laughs> oh, hold on, a cat is trying to get into my food. You have your own! Yeah, but yours looks better. Oh, okay. So I have put together their initiatives. So one includes one and two. Um, with one getting onto the ship, um, deciding that the child is probably not too much of a threat and going instead for um, put the spellcaster. And, uh, oh, well, they're both going for the NPCs, I guess, because this one is right here. Oh, my God! <laughs> <laughs> Impressive! <laughs> you push him in. <laughs> very acrobatic. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I got this. Uh, Stab block. Oh, no. Well, and Nin is unconscious. Oh no! Oh. Um. <clears throat> uh, Pip and Tekka being the ones who are currently facing backward, you see one of them just reaching for Nin and just uh, hitting her on on the back of the head with a hilt of the sword. Just a very strong hit, um, and she collapses almost like over the. Almost over the edge of the ship, but then like back into it. Um, and uh, uh, <laughs> and then the rest of you also hear footsteps like approaching from around here. Um, um, yeah, this way. Boink. Uh, and the Theodomir has also been hit, but not with a critical. <laughs> Um, all right, and at this point the, the, the commotion is quite clear. You hear Theodmer uh, yelling, you've heard Tekka yelling behind you, you hear footsteps. So, uh, so Brook, your go. Hmm, can I get through Telex up here? Right. Uh, up in here? Yes. Cool, cool, cool. Um... Oh, uh, that's hard. Well. <laughs> yep. Don't you love this ship? <laughs> I love it. Here, let me see if I can. Oh, well. <laughs> um, Just stand on this Do floor. your thing. <laughs> yeah. Okay, where is it? Get out of my way. <laughs> yeah, I told you to get back. <laughs> there you go. Send him overboard. You want it to be here? Yeah. Or on the spot. No, no, Whichever. No. Now your, your mini is no longer falling. Look at it. This one, this one. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> what? For the future, uh, if you open up your little contextual menu, uh, mm -hmm. there is an option in the top left, like uh, three or four from the top, that's called stable mini. 
And if you toggle that on, um, on is red, red is on. Uh, it will always keep you horizontal, regardless of the surface you're on. Uh, so it's probably gonna help a lot on this ship. Okay, Brooke, continue. Okay... I think... I will... Just... Normally... Oh, uh, you get 3 temp HP at start of your turn. Oh yeah, I still have it, like, that's the blue... Oh, thing okay, at cool. the bottom. I think I will just try to hit Bender too. Mm hmm. Let's go! Oh my God! Oh yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Big damage! Big damage! Dennis, what happened to your dice? Don't look, <laughs> Talix. Don't look. Uh, are you going for non-lethal? No. Oh. <laughs> it's 15. <clears throat> Sorry. Where, 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 where? There it is. Okay. Uh, and that's number two. Uh, okay. Um, as it is... Uh, as this man was approaching, uh, uh, Vizilli and Talix from behind they just leap into action, run up the stairs, circle around, and uh, faster than he can react, um, manage to um, uh, your weapon manages to make contact against his uh, uh, his leather armor and goes right through, and you draw blood. Um, he's still standing, but it was a very uh, painful blow. All right, that's my turn. Okay. Uh, we are... Wait. Hello? There we go. Red beast. <gasps> uh -huh. This one is dead. Um, which means the brook, you can take your little trophy. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Uh, this one is uh, freed, and now the name is no longer holding concentration. Oh, speaking of concentration, actually. <laughs> okay. Okay. This one is still underwater. This one, uh, after having been gone for a while, just emerges uh, back up and begins to circle around uh, towards the rest of the group. And this one continues what it was already doing and comes over here um, at the... Wait, let me roll. At Pontifex. Um, does a 15 hit? It does not. Okay. Uh, and this time... As uh, the Red Beaks are no longer trying to hold your attention on this side of the ship, uh, they are getting closer and no longer leaving uh, uh, your reach. Zillion. Um, seeing Brooke go around and nearly pushing her uh, off the ship to, to get up here, uh, she turns back respectfully, and sees, like, the current, respectfully, respectfully pushing her slightly out of the way. <laughs> oh hey, it's my turn to roll in at twenty. Oh my god, um, Ooh. this person is. Not, I don't think he can survive. <laughs> Itarava bandit twenty, because all it takes is critical hits. Uh yeah, uh, as Brooke lands a hit, uh, Vizilian simultaneously. Uh, Takes advantage of the opening and stabs him through the heart. What oh. the heck? You killed him? <laughs> <Just murdered him. laughs> I don't understand all this fancy swordsmanship. Just stab in the face. <laughs> or the head. <laughs> Only aim for vitals. Jesus. We have kids on this boat. <laughs> He's just screaming. <laughs> There's a bird behind him, a bandit next to him. 
<laughs> he screams, yet no sound comes. <laughs> no, he can still scream. Can Only scream Daria, no one can hurt. hear you scream. Uh, it's Squeak's turn. All right, so now that they've plummeted down under the surface of the water, uh, Squeak, while maintaining the grapple, is going to use his action to turn into a squid. <laughs> and just wrap the tentacles around the, the yeah. tressum. Oh my god. I'm gonna drown this robot if it's the last thing I do. Does that add anything to the grapple? Mechanically uh, speaking? No, but in terms of like combat, I imagine it wouldn't he, he wouldn't be at disadvantage anymore <laughs> to attack. Since he would now be a sea creature. Uh okay, yeah. Uh Pip? Alright. Um Pip is panicking. <laughs> Pip is Wait. just like, what? No, 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 it's fine. Sorry, sorry, you can go. Okay. It's, it's after you. <laughs> Pip is just going to yell and uh, try and climb up the, the rope. The rope ladder. He's not disengaging or anything, if that matters. Um... Um. Yes, the huh? bandit would attempt to hit Pip. Okay. <clears throat> Hold on. Sorry. That is a seventeen to hit. That hits. Oh. Uh, for nine slashing damage. Ouch. Okay. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> how high can Pip get? Uh, movement up the ladder is just like half of your, your speed. Okay. So it'd be five to get here and then I guess he could only get up ten. Ten's pretty high, though. Oh, dear. Oh, no. Oh, no. Okay. All right. Hold on. Don't worry. Everything's fine. I'm, I'm just going to put this on you, Tech. Don't worry about it. <laughs> here. I'm up here now. It's lost. That's 10 feet. <laughs> Wait. Oh, is gotta, it flipped upside down? It. Or? Yeah. yeah you oh, okay. Hey! Perfect. All right. <laughs> yes. Perfect. Um, so yeah, Pip's up here. Uh, as a bonus action, Pip is going to just glare down at this one and mm -hmm. telepathically shove him. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so that's a strength saving throw. Uh, close that. Get over here. I have so many stat blocks. Ooh, um, it's a it's a sixteen. That succeeds. Just feels a little bit of a strange. Maybe the ship bucked or something. Um, <laughs> and then for Pip's action, uh, he's going to have Squeak attack. Okay. Um, okay, so that's. Da -da -da. I, I, I've got to say that what's happening to this Tressim over here no! is terrifying. <laughs> what? Oh my god. <clears throat> a raven snatched it one. out of the sky, pl uh, made it plummet into the water, and now it's an <laughs> octopus. And it's yeah, and bones that, bones that little beak is just bending. trying to scrape into that metal exterior. Mm. Not quite getting god. in, though. <sighs> Yet they have beaks. Yeah. Those octopus Sweet. beaks. <laughs> Alright, so that's it then. It's okay, it'll figure out how to just pull it apart. Okay. Like how they open jars and stuff. So, next in initiative. No! It broke. <laughs> Damn it, I, I put who's in who's the that? number! Oh, I put it in the wrong place. <laughs> <laughs> ah, here we go, here we go. 
Boom. Hey. Okay. Like comes out of the water. <laughs> no. Um, Tekka, as you're engaged in combat uh, with with uh, with this woman, um, all of a sudden, um, right next to you uh, appears a uh, a young Itarava uh, that wasn't there a moment ago, but just like seemingly out of thin air uh, is Sasuke. now. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Um, she, she, she looks like a, a teenager, definitely still not an adult, uh, but uh, yes, she just appears out of thin air, she attempts to, uh, to, uh, attack you. Um. Ooh. Okay, uh, for 17 um, and a 12 to hit. First hit, 17 does. Is this a sneak attack? Why would you say that? I don't Why know. Generally, if someone. Why are you hearing me roll more dice than usual? <laughs> generally, oh yeah, that too. <laughs> um. Okay. So that is a uh, uh, twelve slashing damage. Mm, Wait, let me count I... them again. T -t 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 -t. Twelve. And you hear her chuckling, and then she points somewhere. And despite it not saying anything, you can see it. You can see that like this person is following her, uh, uh, her action. And uh, uh, then we move on to Talix. Well, so the last thing Talix was doing was lamenting Brooke's uh, <laughs> cruelty, uh, turning around, <laughs> turning around, and seeing the situation. Uh, his priorities shift a little bit, seeing the men on the ground there. Um, he's going to just drop the rope, and he's going to try to, with his movement, quickly dash up here onto the uh, little... Is is this boat actually here? This little... Uh, yeah, you know? but you can, like, climb onto it. Okay. Uh, like jump onto it and without losing momentum, just kick and leap off straight into this woman here who's standing over Nen and try to do like a full body tackle, taking both of us over the railing. Uh, it's oh, the hope. Oh. <laughs> so that would be like a shove, but I'm I'm going down with her. Is that okay? Um. Yeah. What? Yeah, okay. Do I, do I need to do something to be like, make that harder or no 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 no! i'm just uh trying to remember shoves work shove is like just grapples yeah yeah but yeah uh, yeah they work like, yeah, grapples. like grapple. okay mm -hmm. uh so do your athletic check athletics check and you can do it with advantage oh okay okay you'll have to beat the 14. i do nice Nice advantage. Okay. All right. Uh, I guess we're both I... going that one over this railing. Uh, yeah. Uh, right, which do you would... want us to go here or here? Uh, you're going straight diagonally, right? So we'll be right. into the water. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, sploosh. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> I don't know. Uh, what you want. I guess Tech and Pip being the ones who mainly see. Uh, as uh, Talix just charges at this woman and uh, manages to sort of like he, he, he ducks his head a little bit and like manages to grab her from the sides and both of them just go over the railing and you hear the sploosh. Okay, that's it. All right. Well, I guess, <laughs> hmm, technically, I could. Use oh. my bonus action to cast Sanctuary on myself, oh, yeah. which is really weird. Yeah, <laughs> but I could do it from what I'm seeing. So I guess I'll do it uh. <laughs> after violently tackling yeah. this woman off the yeah off the uh, off the boat. Talix will uh, clutch his orb in his hand still and whisper a little prayer of peace. 
It's like the tag you're in, no tag back. Like yeah, right. Spell. <laughs> okay. Like uh, someone and then saying truce. <laughs> yeah, as you as you're like you're in the process of plummeting into the water just before just before you hit the surface of the water, um, you get your arcane words out of your mouth, uh, and then you have to hold your breath as you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, nifty. All right, uh, Theodmer uh, has been injured. Um, oh god, what are his melee options? Eh? Um, needs to hold this thing. Uh, so, the quarterstaff. Bonk. Oh, he managed to hit. Uh, the old wizard special. Magnificent strength uh, modifier. Okay, and now the other half of the Taravas. Um... Uh, one of them in the process of climbing onto the ship, and the other in the process of falling off of it. Um, okay, so I'm going to say that it's going to use all of its movement to just like kick back up towards the surface and then begin to climb onto the boat. Um, I suppose that would mean that, like, vertically speaking, Talix would have an opportunity attack, but I figure he's not taking it. Probably? I know. Okay. Um, so that will be her. And this one... Um, uh, rushes to the right. Uh, uh, steps over the body of the companion. And uh, goes for its brook. By, by the way, this one could have tried to attack me. It just would have had to make a wisdom save first. Uh, yeah, but she was like uh, in the water would have been a disadvantage. Um, okay. She, would, yeah, she prioritized getting back onto like solid, uh, somewhat ground. Right. Oh my goodness. Um, does a 15 hit, Brook? Nope. Okay. Um, all right, that's her. She comes over. She, she comes to begin slashing at you, and you can feel. You can tell she's holding back a little bit. Um, she's not going for. She's not going for your it's heart or your or your neck. Uh, <laughs> going oh. for the heart. <laughs> Pontifex. Oh, so now you're saying she missed on purpose. On the bed. She didn't miss on purpose. <laughs> Should have gone for she the head. She allowed you to live. Are you trying to disrespect me? I tear of our bonded floor. <laughs> <laughs> you know my number? <laughs> How do you know my middle name? <laughs> <laughs> my middle name is Bandit. <laughs> <laughs> my first name is my race. <laughs> <laughs> Pontifex. Yeah, this is fine. Uh, yeah. This uh, leader here. Um, actually, he's gonna say this to. to yeah, we're totally gonna upcast this. Uh, he's gonna turn. Uh, oh yeah, because this is hilarious. I love this. Uh, oh. I'm going to uh, cast command at second level so that I can target two people with it. Uh, and I think he's going to say, uh, you should go for a swim. And then he's going <laughs> to emphasize the word swim. <laughs> and I'm doing it on the leader <laughs> and on Pekka. Whoa. <laughs> and on Pekka? Yeah. Oh I'm my casting God. a spell on him. He can make an attack. Oh. <laughs> Brilliant. Bonk. <laughs> what? Yeah. Okay. 
Uh, does your opportunity attack thing work when uh, the spell targets a creature or when he takes hold of a creature? Like, if he passes uh, the save, does he attack? If you target an ally. Okay. So, if you cast oh a spell God. with a spell slot of first level or higher and target an ally with the spell, the ally can use the reaction immediately after the spell to make one weapon attack against a creature of my choice that I can see. <laughs> okay, all right. So we need uh, I need a saving throw from Tekka. Um, what is it? Is it wisdom? Uh, Probably. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah, 13 wisdom. All right. Tekka's okay. so wise. We'll see. I have an eight. Uh. Oh! Yeah. Wow. Oh, nice. That Amazing. was the perfect outcome with uh, the girl failing the saving <laughs> throw and Tekka passing it. Um, <laughs> like, no, that is stupid. <laughs> <laughs> if he attacks uh, her, does that affect the suggestion? Uh, 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 nope. Okay, cool. Okay, so we just go swing in? Mm hmm. Yeah, you can swing. Well, uh, yeah, he can, he can attack. Yeah, I'm just reading through command. Uh, um, follow the command on its next turn. Uh, yeah, there's nothing about it. Uh, if target can't follow your command, the spell ends. Uh, all right, 24 hits. All right, let's see here. <laughs> it's really hard to read. It looks like Sidus. Sidus! <laughs> <laughs> Just one more. Bonk! Oh, and whenever Tekka hits with a weapon attack, I can add to that damage and try to disarm. Oh! Oh, oh wait, I have sound effect. <laughs> <laughs> disarming. Oh. Yeah. Whenever you disarm the one man band player. <laughs> oh yeah. I have a whole one man band actually. I have a whole bunch. <laughs> uh so Lena has to do a strength saving throw. Okay. You try and hold on. All the saving throws. Does that do extra damage? Is that the Oh, is this your martial adapt? Yeah. That's cool. I didn't know you uh, had that. I have, a, I have a 21 on the strength save. Oh. oh. Really so good holding on to her weapon. <laughs> but oh, she takes an extra six move. damage? Yeah. Okay. Still I had to... really cool, Tekka. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I had to swap out my, my marker because it's out of ink. Uh, we're good now. All right, but it is still Pontifex's turn. So, uh. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, uh, hold on, does this require me to have to see? Uh, is... I can see, okay, and I can't see him right now. Uh, yeah, I think that's it. Uh, okay, yeah, as a bonus action, uh, I'm gonna call my, my wizardly quill. He's gonna pull out his pen, and he's gonna write dunce on her forehead. <laughs> no, no, that's my turn. <laughs> okay, okay uh, Nind is down. Uh, the Trasim is still trying to break free from the grapple. Still has disadvantage <clears throat> on acrobatics to break free. All right, here we go. Come on, squeak. So I have a natural one. Um, oh, good. Let's see if we I did any. Okay. Okay. <laughs> ah. Okay. Squeak Tekka. is just like, yes, yeah, suck it. <laughs> <laughs> it's suffocate beneath the waves. Robot. Um, yeah, so I, I like to imagine this like we're on each side of the, the rope ladder, and it's like a strange game of tag, like yeah. we're. <laughs> the leader tries to slice through, and the Tekka just manages to dodge, and then Tekka tries to slam. Wait. Yeah, that's exactly what's happening. Where is that? Uh, all right. Yeah, and uh, Pip is getting a great view of this strange game yeah, attack. Yeah, he is. <laughs> <laughs> Pip 
lives up there with popcorn hands. His birthday. <laughs> yeah, his <laughs> little his wounds with job. popcorn. Kernels of popcorn falling on Tekka. <laughs> uh, 22 hits. What? Nice. How? How are you? How are your rolls? Don't question it. I... At least someone's got to have the good ones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, someone. And uh, then <laughs> we're going to do a little, uh, what is it called again? Flurry of Blows. So we're going to do two other attacks. The game attack continues. Mm-hmm. A 19 hits. Okay. And that is... And then I'm going to start rolling the second one. Fifteen hits. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Ah, <laughs> uh, is Tekka using his quarter staff again? Yeah, it is always the quarter staff in this strange game attack. Okay. Like sometimes it's like swinging around the rope ladder. Sometimes like it's striking through one of the holes. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is such a cinematic fight. <laughs> <laughs> uh and above it, just looming above it, these large wings just flapping. And you can feel this wind that, it, that the, uh, uh, the displacement of air that they're causing. Uh, and... Yeah? Uh, the, well, what else? Last, last blow. Uh, it is kind of... I guess it's kind of like uh, a di diagonal overhead attack. That is trying to like strike the leader down to the ground. Oh, bro. So that is a dexterity saving. Man, your your turns are so full. Cool. Ah, <laughs> uh, these are dexterity saving throw. Yeah. <sighs> I have a ten. Quick turns. Yep, the leader falls to the ground. <laughs> okay, she's the prone. Of the ship. <laughs> Do we have a prone token? Mm, yeah, that a... is the end of a second turn. Okay, we can just do this. Wow, all right. Um, yeah, take a blow after blow. Um, you're. <laughs> You strike into this, uh, this girl from one side, from another side, and then you like bop her uh, in the chest with like the end of the staff and just push her back, and she like slams her back against the uh, the more el the elevated deck behind her. Um, and as she falls to her knees, uh, um, this one is dead, but this one um, will attack the Odomer. All the NPCs, they're going down, <clears throat> one by one! Oh no! <clears throat> That's the one I'm protecting. Uh... <laughs> and then this one will just jump down here and join the fray. Brook. Okay, okay. If she doesn't want to hit me, I will bonus action Ride of Dawn. So, hit oh. myself. Things are getting serious here on the Brook side of the ship. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, was this just- it's only the temp HP! <laughs> no cost rights! Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. yeah. Alright, and now... Heroism, like, eats it, no blood, and he's like, oh, and it works anyways. <laughs> <clears throat> now I'll hit the uh, bandit number four. Hmm. Hmm? When you activate a right, you lose a number of hit points equal to one roll of your Hemocraft die. 
Um, I wonder if it's worded that way instead of saying you take damage, it says you lose a number of hit points. But I mean, I can take the normal hit points away. It just, it just feels... I, I, maybe I'm thinking of something else, but I feel like it's, there's some features that specifically don't let you not take the damage. And I thought a blood angel was one of them, but I'm really... Like, it's not that clear, and I might be thinking of a different thing. I don't mind where you can roll it like that. Uh, take the temporary hit points for now. I'll look into it after the fight. Okay, okay. It was a 17 <laughs> to hit, by the way. Uh, 17 hits. <clears throat> All right. Number First four. number is normal damage. Second number is radiant damage. All right. So eight normal and two radiant. Got it. Oh, here we go. That question was actually really interesting to me, so I just looked it up, and Matt Mercer actually answered it. Uh, it bypasses temp HP. Oh, okay. Um, it's intentionally worded as damage so that it's not affected by resistances, and uh, temp hit points do not prevent it from working, but if you have temp HP, the feature would bypass them and reduce your actual HP, as this is not damage, but HP reduction. Okay. So I can go unconscious with temp HP? <laughs> yeah, I've really that actually to. has happened to me, but in different in a different way. Uh, it was heroism. Interest. Yeah. All right. So it's my turn. Uh, okay, the ten damage. Uh, yeah, you're you're fighting back against this woman, um, slashing uh, uh, with your with your radiant weapon uh emits light across this entire section of the ship um this red beak is no longer being held um it's going to take a while to get out of the water so it's able to ultimately like uh come over here for like the entirety of its turn um this one no! All our Over NPCs! <laughs> <laughs> I'm not trying to do it! Uh, okay. Mm, number six rolls to attack Tekka. Does a... an 18 hit. It does hit. Ooh. Uh, that is uh, 12 slashing damage. Oh boy. <laughs> there was, yeah, there was, there was a rough hit. Um, as it slashes with both of its talents from like almost directly above you, um, where you can't really like uh, parry it away, not while you're also simultaneously fighting through the rope ladder. Yeah. Um, this one has advantage. Yeah, I think like Tech is leaning back against the mast. Oh wow! Uh, well, this Red Beak has managed to miss with an advantage. Uh, so Let's Zillian, go! Zillian has yet to take like a single hit point of damage. And speaking of Zillian, uh, it's her turn. Finish him! Finish him! <laughs> <laughs> Heart stab. <laughs> <laughs> She's very practical. She's like, you just, just. To strike her like this. Yeah, um, just dancing flourishy stuff. Just stab them in the heart. Yeah, Vizilian will actually like get all the way behind her and just uh, balance uh, on the little um, uh, railing here that separates these right. two decks. And uh, uh, attack with flanking. E doesn't miss. With advantage. And okay. This woman is starting to get. Whoops. Um, to get pretty hurt. Squeak all the way, um, like starting to like be left behind from by a, by the ship. <laughs> uh, since it's been a few turns, I will like take the liberty of moving them a little bit. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, squeak. I mean, squeak is just still, you know, holding on, mm -hmm. uh, squeezing even tighter with those tentacles, and just saying, 
Give up. Give up now. <laughs> I'll ruin you. <laughs> I'll take your parts back to Pip. <laughs> <laughs> is this um, like octopus noises or is it a... No, it's, voice. it's actually Squeak's voice. Okay, because it's underwater. <laughs> so it's probably just... He's more just hyping himself up. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's on, it's on Pip's turn that he actually gets to attack. Mm -hmm. So Pip is going Which to use is, his yep. bonus action now to have Squeak attack. Quick attack. Hopefully Squeak it's, attack. Hopefully it's better than the one. Oh, <gasps> it is. Uh, yeah. What? You got oh, my dice right. today. What yeah, kind of rolls do you guys have today? This is, these oh. are crazy. All right. So uh, first, it's the magical piercing damage. Mm -hmm. All right, mm -hmm. and then should I even bother with the the poison? <laughs> uh, no. Yeah. No need to bother with the poison damage. Uh, 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 uh. Okay. And had this been like an actual tressim, um, this definitely would have between that and the poison, it would have been sufficient to to kill an, uh, a small animal like that. But uh, this machine, besides being a little bigger than a normal tressim, uh, it's it's also just the solid metal construction um, that is light enough to fly and light enough to not sink uh, deep underwater, but it's still not strong enough to actually break free from uh, from Squeak's uh, grasp. Right. What else does Pip do? Uh, Pip is going to uh, look down here and see all this commotion going on um, and is going to uh, glance down at the bandit here uh, just over the over the crow's nest mm -hmm. and will cast Crown of Madness, uh, dropping concentration on Hex. Uh, so that's a wisdom saving throw from the bandit. Um, failure. Okay. I have a six. Excellent. <laughs> so on its Hex. turn, it needs to. Excellent. Excellent. On its turn, it will need to uh, use its action to make a melee attack against a creature other than itself that I choose. Uh, and other stuff that we'll deal with later. <laughs> okay. Uh, we're finally back to the um, to the teenage uh, Itara turn, who um, uh, has been hit many times, has fallen to the ground, and as she stands up, she like glances briefly at Pontifex, um, with just a perplexed expression. And she does not follow his command as she does not understand his language. Oh. Um, and oh she'll no. instead pull herself up and resume the fight against Tekka. Oh. She doesn't know how to swim, Professor. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, 19 to hit and 7... No, uh, 15. What was that number? Uh, 19 and 15. <laughs> uh, Sorry, welcome. I know first how to one. do math. Yeah, first one hit. <gasps> oh, um... Oh, yeah, if this results, which it does, uh, um, she wouldn't have done the second attack against you. I, had, I didn't see where your hit points were. Um, hilariously, I've rolled minimum damage, but it's still a four. Yeah. <coughs> Wait. Well, no. It's more than a four. Oh. But yeah. Uh, she, she uses one of her weapons to just slash through the rope uh, in its entirety, just from one side to the other, leaving a paper partially stranded. Um, and then she leaps forward to just uh, um, hit... Tekka, um, mm, 
she's not going for non-lethal. Um, just hit the attack Alex through, um, uh, through the shoulder, drawing just enough blood uh, for him to start uh, feeling dizzy and vision going black. Uh, and as she chuckles victoriously, uh, the second attack that I said earlier would be instead towards Pontifex. Would a 15 have hit him? Uh, 15? No. Okay. Um, and uh, she she lost a lot of time between having to like stand up, uh, cutting the rope, uh, stabbing Tekka. That the the second hit just comes with uh, uh, the hit towards Pontifex just comes with uh, not uh, uh, enough speed uh, and. Uh, um, Ultimately, just bumps against the Pontifex's armor. Uh, what you trying to do here? <laughs> I'm sorry, I tried to flip him over, but this this thing is stopping me from doing that. So <laughs> just forget all that. It's getting in the way here. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't put him back on the ground because of that platform thing. Oh, I'm sorry. It, you know this all is right. fine. This is fine. Yeah, yeah that looks like <laughs> <it>. <laughs> <laughs> he stepped forward and got caught up in the net. Like, <laughs> had one arm through each full on each side, and then his head through the middle. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, in fact, she would just straight up move over here. Um, so that's actually fine. Uh oh. <clears throat> All right. Uh, Talix. Okay. So, swimming and climbing up here. Does that... Is my movements enough to do that? Uh, yeah. Just like it was for her. Can so I that will take be... another step? Uh... Yep, yeah, you can. Just one more. Okay. Now, I don't... I don't know how accurate these heights are. Can I reach up and touch an end? Uh, yeah. Down here. Okay. I knew where she was roundabouts before I jumped off. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to go over there and quickly... Yeah, you leaped almost over her <laughs> when you took that. I myself you. exposed here, but I'm relying on sanctuary. Uh, and I'm going to reach up and... Grab an end and cast Cure Wounds. First level. Six hit points to end. Okay. That's it. All right, uh, yeah, as, uh, as divine energy begins to collect onto your hand and move onto Nin's body, uh, you see her eyes just uh, blink and uh, she's awake. Oh, he is not. <laughs> okay. Um... Brook. Brook, does a 16 hit you? Nope. Yeah, she needs to start rolling a little higher if she wants to do anything. <laughs> you should try aiming for the heart. <laughs> <I'll> try. <laughs> um, and uh, uh, Talix, you feel. You feel a, a pull uh, at your backpack as this person like sort of like grabs and turns around and tries to hit you. Um, what do I have to do for Sanctuary? Do I have to roll a Wisdom save? Roll a Wisdom save, yes. All the Wisdom saves. Yeah, 12? No, 11? That, that fails. Uh, so what happens? Uh, you can't attack me. You can't... Uh... Okay, let me, let me read more specifically. But... Generally, it says you have to uh, choose another target after you try to target someone. Okay. Um, there is no yeah. other target here. So yeah, she sort of right. like pulls you back a little bit uh, and you turn around just as here like trying to, to strike you down. And she, you see her not even going for the blow. She just lifts her weapon and it's like her own will is being tested. Like some part of her suddenly no longer wants to go through with this. Um... 
And she shakes her head, visibly confused at this. And uh, uh, um, I'm going to go ahead and say to her, we don't have to fight in a turn. We don't have to fight. Question, are you saying that's a three or number four? <laughs> three. It's, it's a three okay, down okay. here. Um, <laughs> okay. Um, this is da, 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 with an attack or harmful spell. Yep. Um, okay. And again, yeah, she she hesitates. Uh, um, her uh, her weapon is lowered a little bit, uh, um, and uh, oh, um, hmm. Let me think, let me think. Okay. Um, and after the moment of confusion, she like... Um, her her expression goes back to um, to the hostile one she was wearing before, though slightly softer. Uh, as she says, Then leave our river! Hmm. Um... And she puts like a hand on the railing, like she's about to climb up, um, but she's still looking at him. Yeah. Okay. Pontifex. I think uh, with, with Tech, Tech is in this space directly in front of me. He's still within five feet of the leader, right? Uh, yeah. He's just unconscious. Yep. He's no longer no unconscious. Uh, I'm gonna healing word as a bonus action. Okay. Yeah. And then right. after the spell, you can make an attack. You're just prone, so it's disadvantage, <laughs> but you can. Uh... <laughs> and I'll I'll roll health while he. It's because of this thing. Oh. I got it. Nice. I'm just locking him in place. <laughs> Never I'm moving him again. Too scared. Ooh, max HP. Heals for seven. Ooh. Sid, your dice. Disadvantage. I was really trusting on the Sid dice there with the disadvantage. <laughs> That'll work. That, Perfect. That <laughs> Uh, yeah, tech after just a brief moment uh, um, where everything went uh, went dark, uh, uh, you are brought back to consciousness. Um, do you want to do anything else in a turn, Pontifex? Yeah. Uh, now that tech is up and I'm still kind of surrounded by everything, because this bird is still like right doing here. Yes. Right? It, it attacked the Tekka earlier, I believe. Yeah, oh, I think oh, oh. he's gonna, you know, look over to the bandit that's uh, that's cornered by Brooke and the other girl. And it's like, stop playing with your food! And it's gonna cast Toll the Dead on Bandit 4. Hey! Yeah. Uh... <laughs> stop wasting time and come help us! <laughs> it's a wisdom save, yeah? Yeah. On Bandit 4. Uh, right. uh five. Uh, yeah, that, that failed. For this man. Mm. 11. Nice! Wow. It's a good roll. Uh, 11 is enough to kill her. That offsets the one earlier. <laughs> and now he's mad. No bird feathers in his mouth. <laughs> That's right. Okay. Um. And uh, Nind. And that is my turn. And this. Uh, tick has uh, what tick? Tekka. <laughs> <laughs> Tekka. Um. There. When uh, when your vision when your vision went dark, um, for a moment you heard and saw nothing, just enveloped with silence and in darkness, and then your eyes opened, 
uh, to a different place, a different reality. Um, where things happened, but we'll get to those at the end of the fight. Oh. Uh, we will backtrack a little bit uh, so we keep everything consistent time-wise. Um, but remind me <laughs> after this battle, try to get to that. Um, and you, uh, as you woke up and you just instinctively tried to like reach forward with, with your quarter staff and try to trip over the uh, the woman that nearly took your life and uh, you end up missing as you're like in a bit of a weird position uh, as you're like trying to get your bearings and looking around and like in the process of getting up. Um, Nind next to you is also in the process of like getting back to you, to her feet and you and her exchange a perplexed and uh, um, just a perplexed oh. glance. Oh. Um, Got it. And then as she's oh like God. coming like back, uh, back to her feet, uh, um, confused and hurt, uh, uh, looking around and seeing that there is there is still enemies all around her uh she'll take the um disengage action uh oh man she really doesn't have anywhere to go uh, <laughs> well technically uh, she all right is this there, is right? that yeah yeah um yeah, yeah yeah she she will like disengage and like back away like all the way against this wall and near brook uh. um mm. Oh, she doesn't have anything else she can do some this action. So yeah, uh, we're back at the top of the round where, meanwhile, as the camera pans over <laughs> to the underwater fight, uh, um, at least the Trasim is no longer hexed, so it doesn't have disadvantage uh, on uh, freeing itself from the grappling check. So, uh, Austin? Uh, <gasps> yes, that's true. Okay. Oh, I rolled an 19! Uh, well, I have no chance of beating that, so... <laughs> <laughs> I'll roll anyway for fun. Well, would, yeah, does a natural 20 automatically that. succeed? No, it doesn't. Not for checks. Nope. Yeah, still um, I have a 17 plus 2. Okay. Uh, and as the Tressim finally breaks free from the grasp of the, 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 the octopus... Um, like so far, like like it has done so far, uh, it makes no attempt to hurt Squeak, and instead begins to like um, weakly slap, uh, flap its wings uh, and kick with its legs and start like getting all the way to the surface uh, of the river. You can't run away from me, <laughs> um, Tekka. Yeah, so Tekka stumbles to his feet, uh, and in respect of the fish, uh, the the fiction, I think like the grievous shoulder wound is leaving in him unable to like wield the quarter staff properly. So he drops it to the ground, and then just leaps ahead and strikes the leader. Uh, that is the best. Okay. Okay, we're just gonna hits. keep doing this, I guess. <laughs> Tech is a beast. <laughs> a beast. <laughs> a beast. And then, yeah, we are gonna keep going. A flurry of blows. <laughs> this is not gonna stop. <sighs> All right. Once again, with some gusto now. <laughs> 15 hits. Okay. That's the second time you have uh, met her AC. And these two second strikes, uh, I think, is like trying to attack her arm. I like just drastically trying to inhibit her ability to use her blade. Okay, yeah. 
uh, you just land. Uh, you're, you're punching her, right? Yeah. Yeah, you land punch after punch. Um, except that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then she finally begins to pull away from you. And uh, as before, like you saw the, the overconfidence, the overconfident smile on her face as she like took you down. Uh, now that you're back on your feet and still attacking her, she's actually like finally moving away from you and visibly, uh, maybe not fearing you. Maybe uh, I, I don't think she'd really show fear, but it's more like there is definitely like confusion and uh, slight. Uh, um, like she she perceives you now as a threat, uh, where uh, she didn't before. Uh, is that your turn? Yeah, Tekka is just like stumbling. Like he's not, he's struggling to keep balance, and uh, now he's like holding one of his hands to his shoulder blade. Uh, is this guy charmed? He has crown of madness on him. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Which I couldn't means, remember what happened. Uh, it must use its action before moving uh, to make a melee attack against this one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um. We don't have to fight his friend. <laughs> snaps her across the face. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Well, I normally uh, I rule as usual, and uh, um. I'm gonna give it advantage on this attack because this person was not going to see it coming in the slightest. Uh, yeah, both Talix and Pip just witness uh, this one uh, Itarva just turning back and like leaning onto the railing as uh, she had a hand onto the railing, uh, like she, uh, she she was holding onto it. Uh, um, and he just steps like through the hand and onto the railing uh, and drives the blade like through the wood and then back out. And uh, yeah, she, she yelps in pain. Um, what happens after, after that? Uh, he can still move after that. Willingly, freely, wherever he wants? Yeah, just whatever he wants to do. <laughs> it's kind of a weird spell because he does something that He's he very obviously doesn't thing. want to do, but then he's mm. like, oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> yeah. Um, like, why did I do that? Okay. Uh, uh, That's actually like a pretty apt description of madness. Yeah. <laughs> doing yeah. something that like is completely against your will and then wondering, why did I just do that? And then doing it again six seconds later. <laughs> pretty <laughs> much, yeah. Okay. Oh, 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 that's not, that's not the right thing. Here we go. You better, you better run next to your leader. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Talix, you understand as, uh, uh, the, the woman next to you, um, actually yells out, uh, um, out loud in, in Itarian, uh, um, after, after screaming in pain and like pulling back a little bit from the ship and see, you see the whole thing unfolding, uh, as she says, L Luther, what are you doing? Um, Luther? uh, Luther. Hmm. Um, and as the man, uh, after pulling back the, the, the blade out of her hand, uh, he like, takes a step back, just confused, nearly bumps into Tekka, um, and then he looks towards the young teenager. Um, and the two of them exchange a glance, and despite them not speaking, it feels like an entire conversation just took place between them, um, as uh, she nods at him, and he holds up a hand, it's just his, his free arm up in the air. Um, Brooke, yeah. uh, Nain is next to you and, uh, there's two corpses, uh, here. Uh, what would you like to do? And attacks a leader. Okay. Uh, you're also flanking. Oh, I do. That means advantage, right? Yep. Oops. Oh. Uh, 
Cool, cool. That hits. All right. Second one is the extra. Uh, the radiant, I mean. Ooh. So fifty normal and one radiant. Non-lethal, non-lethal, non-lethal. Uh, uh, <laughs> close. Um, as she was like beginning to move away from Tekka, um, she just runs into you, and like your 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 strike comes at her from behind, and she wasn't ready to dodge it. And uh, uh, you you draw blood, but you don't pu uh, uh, you don't push the blade through her body as hard as you could. Um, you can see that she's uh, um, stumbling and. Uh, um, and she looks... she looks bad. <clears throat> Alright, that's my turn. Okay. Um, Pontifex and Tekka. Um, this red beak is beginning to fly upward and out of your reach. Would either of you like to take an opportunity attack? No, Tekka's so focused on the leader. Yeah, no. Okay. Uh, so it pulls back, imagine, like, I'm not gonna take out a platform, but like, uh, higher up, uh, back a little bit, sort of like, doing a little circle, spiraling up, uh, and then it swoops down in this direction, and as it does, uh, this guy grabs onto one of its talons and gets dragged away. Huh. Uh, similarly, as this one, uh, Talix, you, you, you almost instinctively begin to duck as this red beak is coming right towards you. And um, as this woman exchanges another glance with you, she uh, she lets go of her sword uh, just onto the ground to use her uh, the hand that she isn't injured, uh, the non-injured hand, to also hold onto this one and uh, um, get dragged in this direction. Interesting. Um, which ones are these? A six, seven, and two? Um, And, uh, oh, there's kind of a sail in the way. Um, let's say this. This one comes over here, and it's flying right next to the ship, and it's, uh, you can see that it's, like, waiting. Um, and as you all witnessed uh, that these, uh, uh Red Beaks, like, assisted, uh, um, these two people in their escape, you, you can see that, uh, um, it's trying to coordinate with the younger Itarava. Um, uh, and just waiting for her to, like, reach for it. Um... Vizillian... Vi uh, um, hmm. Yeah, Vizillian, uh, like, seeing these, uh, uh, red beaks just flying this way, uh, she takes a crossbow back out and she will try to shoot at them. Oh. Um, successfully hit into this red beak, which apparently has never been hit before. Oh, because it was underwater. Yeah. For most of it. Uh, okay. Uh, squeak. The machine is above you. And with your swim speed, you can definitely like, easily catch up to it. Uh, um, <coughs> if you'd like. Tressum, you can't run away from me. I'll hunt you down to the ends of the earth. And we'll <laughs> <swim up laughs> And uh, I think he'll just try and I guess just try and attack it again. 
is a miss. All right, maybe you can run. Do you have advantage <laughs> if, like, one of you doesn't have a swim speed? I, I've just been struck by the thought. Hmm. I have never done underwater <laughs> combat, as you can underwater probably tell. Underwater combat, 5e, Google. Let's go. Mm, gonna... Oh, a creature that doesn't have... I just need to have a disadvantage. I think it just no, I don't. I don't think it. Yeah. Spell components. Okay, it's only it... it's only whoever is attacking that will have a, a disadvantage if they don't have swim speed, right? right? Okay. All right. Um. Anyway, that should have been on Pip's turn as a bonus action. Oh yeah. Um. But. Uh, Pip is going to drop concentration on, Crown of Madness. Um. Ah, I was like ready for a uh, <laughs> red -uh, beak slaughter. He ain't, making, <laughs> he ain't making a red beak get hit. Yeah, okay. No matter how mean they are. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, <sighs> what to do though? <laughs> how leaning back down this way? How is the? The leader looking like what's her demeanor looking uh, like? She, she and the red beak next to her are looking at each other, and she's like uh, leaning forward a little bit and like in the process of reaching for it. Okay. Okay. Um. Yeah. Pip's not feeling great, and the way down is is sort of uh, destroyed a little bit. So I think Pip is just going to lay down in the crow's nest and <laughs> try and just hold his breath and hide. <laughs> okay. Uh, as for Pontifex and Brook uh, and Tekka, um, as this uh, young girl begins to back away against the railing, puts a hand on it. Uh, what is that? Stealth. Oh! <laughs> My sneaky. Yeah, sneaky. Um, she... She locks eyes with Tekka and sticks out her tongue. <sighs> and then she disappears um, from, from view, just suddenly gone. But you see, like, a second later, the red beak, uh, like, losing a few inches of, uh, of, uh, um, like verticality, uh, as if it's a little heavier, and one of its talons clearly like dangling lower than the other, as it begins to uh, to uh, just circle around. Uh, and you can take an opportunity attack on on the bird if you'd like. Uh, is this one of the injured birds? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, is in you are attacking I, it? Yeah. I, I probably would as well. Okay. I'll let Brooke go ahead first. You're probably a lot faster on the draw than him. <laughs> a seventeen hits. Non lethal? <laughs> is that a question? If you want to be non-lethal, why are you even attacking the bird? <laughs> because I can't You're see far away. You're about to run away. Yeah, and then come yeah, back. You might come back. No. <laughs> no. I haven't attacked a bird yet. I'm specifically the after the leader. <laughs> um, 14 is sufficient. Uh, um, 14 damage, yeah. Um, <clears throat> for the bird, as it begins to just uh, as it begins to turn around and fly off, uh, uh, Brook, you reach uh, you 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 hop onto the railing to gain just enough reach to slice at its tail. Um, and as the the bird squawks and falls into the water, you see another 
area of water that displaces despite seemingly nothing being there. Um, and it should be pretty clear to the both of you that uh, uh, the girl also fell into the water and is merely invisible, uh, but is still there. Um, and you can actually just see the silhouette of her in the water. Um, roughly over here. How far can one jump? Um, Strength score in feet. Yeah. Right. Strength I score in feet if you have a 10 foot running start. Otherwise, it's half. Uh, uh, round it up well, or down? Uh, it's. <laughs> it's Talix's I mean, turn. Alex's turn? Yeah. Um, so, how aware is he of what's been going on on deck? Uh, since he could see through the railing and he reached for an end earlier, she, he had like an arm through. I'd say he was able to like see everything in, in his field of view. Uh, so everything on the ship. Talix is definitely going to be yelling, Stop attacking them! They're running away! And... Uh, it's going to try to climb up on deck. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's just, you know, how... 10 feet of movement, because it's only 5 feet up. This... <laughs> oh my goodness. It's a 10 feet to get here. Okay. Yeah, if he sees that Theodmer is down, he's going to try to make his way over there. Uh, how about climbing up here? What does that impart? Oh, uh, yeah, it is fine. It's, it's not a match for this level. Okay. Just cast Cure Wounds on Theodmer, first level. Okay. Oh, he gets the good heal. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and it is his turn as he like come comes back to uh, to uh, to his feet. Look, uh, shakes his head, looks around, uh, catches his breath, looks at you confusedly uh, for the first time with no facility <laughs> in, in his Alex eyes. Will again say, "Let them run." Um, okay, that's and then yeah, he. Then he looks around, trying to understand what's even going on, and he begins to just make his way towards the end, uh, calling out for her. Um, yeah, roughly over here. Yeah. Good enough. Um, I guess I should just ask if any of you are gonna try to stop these uh, guys, and if... Uh, ah. I don't know if you should say an initiative. Um... Squeak will continue to have combat with this Tressum as I long guess. as it takes. <laughs> I don't know if that's something we need to... <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, I might... Okay, this Depends part might be about to be resolved because... Oh, well, no. Because uh, he has uh, more fly, flying speed. Swim. Yeah, it's more flying speed than the Tressum does. Uh, what? Yeah, it's, like, it's like a moon druid who doesn't run out of transformation. Yeah. Checkmated <laughs> yourself. Okay. All right. Yeah. Um. Uh, the mechanical tressim will never make an attempt to harm Squeak, and it it cannot outrun him. Um, so it's inevitable that eventually, at some point, in one form or another, Squeak is able to destroy this thing. Okay. Um, Talix will be yelling at anyone who tries to shoot at the birds and tell them to stop and just let them go. And what? Are you sure I could throw a lightning ball like you would not believe? <laughs> Serious question. Do you not want me to bring them out of the sky? Let them go. We've won this fight. There's no reason to hurt them. And if we were not here, what of uh, 
Nind. They harmed her. They so you it. want retribution? No, I want prevention. That comes... That comes with peace. <clears throat> vengeance does dead. not bring peace, ever. Tell that to the gnomes. <laughs> <laughs> if we just finished the job, there would be everlasting <laughs> peace. Why does it always come back to the gnomes with you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, come on, that's my big story. Everything is the gnomes. <laughs> Genocide is the answer. <laughs> okay, but seriously, uh, is anyone jumping in to help either the bird or the, uh, the teenager <laughs> who is now... I would. Okay. Which one? <laughs> Dives uh, in with the sword. Yeah, I got it. Don't worry I about still, it. Is, 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 is the leader still invisible? Uh, yeah, she is invisible, and you would be seen as she's beginning to but swim it's... away from the ship, and she's trying oh. to like dive into the water. But like, we—it's still possible to see. Uh, as she's only like maybe half a foot beneath the surface, you can see her silhouette still. All right. According to your website, I need a pen. Put starred, and then I have to do like an athletics <laughs> saving throw to get over this to jump 13 feet horizontally to here. Yeah, so there's, no, there's no check on long jumps. But it says it. if there are obstacles in the way, you might need to make a d10 ah. strength athletics check to jump over them. So I thought the railing might be. I don't need to, I can just jump. Uh, I'd say if you want to do the running jump to gain just disaster three feet of movement uh, yeah. and uh, and yeah jump over the railing, I would I would indeed call for that check. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> Don't trip, that'd be embarrassing. <laughs> well, uh, I take my inspiration. <laughs> <laughs> This card looked bad. This card looked bad. Uh, I really need to stop giving you this. Yeah. <laughs> it's still below 10! <laughs> More inspiration. Any inspirations left? <laughs> <laughs> what yeah, happens now? Uh, yeah, it's Brookie. You step back <laughs> a little bit and you, <laughs> you take a, a running jump, and you're like, you just like inches away from clearing it, but your boot just like hits uh, the top of the railing and you, like flip forward and end up in a water head first. So, do I still have movement? Uh, no. Do I still have an action? No. <laughs> You <laughs> just have to like pull bonus yourself up. <laughs> you have nothing, you lose. Not you don't even have pride. Right. You have your bonus, you have your bonus action. Um, Wait, I can't see her. Well, someone else got her. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if, if, so it looks, she's not drowning or anything. She's swimming uh, away. She's, yeah, she's swimming away. Everything. Okay, Talix is fine with her getting away. Uh,. Instead, he's probably going to be looking to see if there's any people or animals on the ship that are still alive that need help. If, the, if any of the Atara or any of the Red Beaks on the ship that fell might still have any life left in them. Um. Okay. I'm just of going to... Of course, that's to... not going to be like a, a single action. That's going to be a long, a long term thing. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to give like both of them a chance to still be alive. Um, I'll just roll for it quickly. All What's people deserve death saves. Um, I <laughs> <What's>... <laughs> this combat already lasted like two hours. <laughs> if I had to do their death saves, it would have been an extra they minute. They all deserve it was... death saves. Um, it was only 18 seconds. What are you but talking I have about? Given it... <laughs> <laughs> but I've given it to like both of them uh, a chance. And uh, um, neither of them are alive. Sorry, real beaks? quick. Uh, before she gets too far away, because whenever Brooke dove in, I think the professor would have, because Matt had to read the spell to make sure, but the professor would know this. Uh, he's going to yeah. cast a tech thought on her. Uh, mm -hmm. I, they don't have to share language with me. 
And what's the distance that he were that I works at? Uh, so he would have done it like right after Brooke went over. Okay. Uh, uh, Jason, uh, no red beaks died over the ship, but they're all in the water. And Talix like will jump in. Being after left the red behind. Beast. Really? If he thinks they're alive. Uh, he could get this one that, that uh, Brooke just got. I'll try. The others would have been left behind by the ship. Uh, and yeah, Pontifex may have uh, uh, a chance to cast detect thoughts on the girl before she, uh, you know, eventually begins to swim further and further. Yeah. Um, and he's like immediately going to pry just to try to get his the, any amount of information he can. That's a save, yeah? Uh, yeah, DC 14 wisdom save. Uh, and I get the surface thoughts in either case. Uh, He's no basically fishing to see if she has intentions of returning. Okay. All right. Detect thoughts. Detect thoughts. Um, you read the thoughts of a certain creature. The initial surface thoughts would all be about escape. Uh, just mm -hmm. uh, swim as fast as you can. Um, kind of thing. And she's surface thoughts about revenge. Uh you sense we that uh, revenge on us. Um, and then you, you feel a sense of grief um, as she has come to the realization that uh, the red beak uh, uh, um, which from her thoughts you gather her, uh, it, that uh, his name is Reuven um, the red beak that was assigned to her at birth, uh, uh, her companion of 15 years, uh, has fallen today. And you feel, you, you feel the sense of uh, uh, grief coming from her and guilt. Um, like she thought this was going to be an easy heist. Um, you, you, you have flashes of memories. His ship has been uh, robbed before, uh, previously. And there have been instances where they just like gave the cargo away to not be attacked. Uh, but they didn't expect all these people with magic um, to be defending it. And uh, um, you <laughs> you guys knew this from the name, uh, but you do gather like from her thoughts that she was like responsible for this. She organized this. She was leading these people. Um, and so rather than revenge, it's just guilt that you feel uh, coming from her. That I don't actually think that argument with Talix would have taken place because this would have been before. <clears throat> okay. Uh, Talix, if you have any more healing spells, uh, uh, you'd be able to like catch up with the uh, with this bird uh, um, before it's like floating away out of your reach uh, uh, and you can heal it. If that's not what you were he, going for. Uh, yeah, he will. Um, and he'll try to... Uh, I mean, unless it springs to life immediately. Hmm, I guess it probably would. <sighs> Can I make a medicine check to see how dire it is? The attack was non-lethal. Its name <laughs> is Reuven. I mean, it's kind of hard to... <laughs> Um, like the, the instant I get there, can I try to see, can I try to gauge how much time I have? Do I need to like do it now or not? I, I feel I like you wouldn't need the, the, the check for that. Uh, um, if, uh, uh, if only just because you saw the way Brooke uh, attempted to hit it. Uh, um, and you'd know that like this, this bird is now like on the brink of death. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You can see even see him like uh, uh, still like twitching his wings and trying to like sort of like wake up in the water. Okay. It was um, non-lethal, right? The brook did. Yeah. Okay, just All trying right. to remember. Because I have two spell slots left. Um, well, in fact, mm, yeah. Okay. So here's basically the list of things Talix wants to do. He wants to heal it, cast animal friendship on it, and then ritual cast uh, speak with animals. But animal friendship lasts, yeah, 24 hours, so that would work. 
Well, mm-hmm. you can't do animal friendship, Dan. <laughs> okay. He's smart. I guess. Uh, I guess he'll heal it. He might. He might like just heal it and oh. dive underwater. Yeah, maybe he'll uh, take it and. There is there any sort of like indoor area in this boat or is that just? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, there is. It's uh, where most of the car- most of the cargo is held, like uh, uh, on under, the. There is an the... under the deck kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. Okay. He wants. Okay, so here's the deal. I guess <laughs> he'll just tie one of its feet down. He uh, lets. Did he have? Will cast speak with animals. Didn't Alex just lose his uh, rope? Ten feet of it. Do you want it to be the whole thing? Uh, I just remember I, him cutting it. The ten foot was said. I, I, I did that. say I did say that. Oh, okay, then yeah. yeah. I don't know. Then yeah, that's fine. I just miss it. Uh, that's okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, you have the rest of the rope. Then yeah, you he's can. He's like saying how you cut it was, at like a perfect yeah, ten feet. Yeah, right. I, <laughs> which is crazy. I was <laughs> no, no, no. Like if that was actually too much to do in an action, that we can. No, no, no. It's fine. Okay. So yeah, I guess I'll cut another ten feet. And actually, not that much, whatever. And uh, tie one of the seat down, heal it, ritual cast, speak with animals, and I'm going to try okay. to have a conversation. Uh, the, the healing will take place in the ship? Like, is that where you're tying it? Yeah. All right. Yeah. So, yeah, in the water, as the bird is like partially conscious, it, it's like, it's a little difficult, but Brooke at some point like, just emerges next to you uh, and can assist <laughs> with like tying a bird and carrying it to the ship. Uh, would the others can help you like climb on board? Of course. Um, so with the red beak captured, uh, we can go on break and we'll continue this after the break. All right. <clears throat> um, wow. Is the is Quick going to take like the remains of the <laughs> mechanical yeah. dressing on the during, ship? During yeah, this whole time, there's just like an aerial combat taking place. <laughs> yeah, it was aerial and then underwater and then back in the air until finally you hear a sploosh and then Squeaky goes back underwater, recovers the uh the dressing and takes it onto the ship. Just brings it back like a cat brings a mouse to the doorstep. <laughs> it, uh, yeah. Just- Norm with most of these machines, it's not like Squeak would not have had the strength to do it, but this is a very light one. Okay, um, let's go and break for ten minutes. All right. Oh, geez, that scared me. I was zoomed in real close. Oh, <laughs> oh man, that was a jump scare. <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> so sorry. Uh, Tekka. Mm-hmm. We have a little something something. Talk about. <laughs> Let's talk about it. A flash of white and yellow engulfs you. You blink finding yourself in a small circular room built out of marble, with the only accent of color being the occasional golden highlight on the furniture here and there. The blankets on the bed are a dark gray color and seem clean and untouched, perfectly made. The books on the shelves don't have a speck of dust on them and are perfectly organized. Ahead of you, sunlight shines through the open window, and you feel a light breeze blowing through your your clothes. Standing in front of the window is a figure wrapped in colorless silks with long, white, straight hair reaching about halfway down his back. Put down that token! Put down those tokens! <laughs> um, he turns towards you. The six feet tall man has pale purplish, uh, purple bluish hue to his skin and uh, blue eyes. His soft facial features and pointed ears both seem to make him an elf, though uh, you, Tech, have never seen one with this peculiar skin color, though you have recognized uh, uh, the, the man that Alex and Alien both independently sketched. He looks at you, then to your right and then to your left, 
you follow his gaze to, and you find that uh, uh, Nind and Theodomer are both by your side. Looking back at you in confusion, their forms shifting in and out of existence, blurry, fading. He immediately moves to hold his daughter, who allows him to hug her. The three of you stare back uh, at the elf. Uh, there is uh, silence, if you would like to do or say anything. Hmm. I think Tekka locks eyes with Fiki. Mm -hmm. No words, okay. The elf takes a step forward, out of the sunlight. Through the window behind him, out on the horizon, there is an enormous tree, taller than a mountain, so big that despite the distance, the entire sky is covered in its branches. He holds out a hand, palm facing upward, and speaks. Don't leave, godlings. Please, stay. Almost as if in reply, um, as you turn uh, your head uh, to your side, you see the forms of uh, Nind and Theodomer shifting further away from existence, like shadows with a light cast upon them. You no longer see them. You don't hear them say anything. You are left alone with the elf. Is this a dream? The two of you staring into each, o each other's eyes, uh, um, you see that the way he watches is curious, interested, perplexed, even saddened for a moment as uh, uh, the two Janazi are gone, but then ultimately satisfied when, uh, um, when you seem to be remaining here with him. He lowers his arm, looks around, and says, I do not know. How can you tell? I can not. He waves his hand in a bit of a dismissive gesture. Um, almost gives a bit of a shrug, as he says. I know of dreams. But I cannot say I've ever experienced one, unless this entire thing. Looks around, doesn't finish the sentence, just lets it hang. Uh, he's speaking to you in uh, uh, in clean, perfect uh, uh, plurnon. I have questions. Then ask. Who are you? My name is Tekka. Tekka. I definitely do not remember making you. How did you come into existence without me willing it? I do not know the origin of my creation. Curious? Do you plan on staying? People need me, so no. He waits, um, almost as if expecting something to happen. He looks around a little bit and then focuses back on you. Um, and offers a, a smile. It's not a, it's not a kind smile. It's more like it's, um, uh, there is an emptiness to it, but it also simultaneously doesn't really feel insincere. Are there others like you? 
other gods? No. It is just me. Although I suppose you are... ...something more than everybody else. Can you create? Can you change? Tekka shrugs. Not like you, I imagine. Interesting. So you are no god, but uh, uh, you come into existence on your own and you have your own free will. Curious. Uh, what of the others? Uh, those who were just here with you. Uh, are they gods? No. They are no gods, but they are in danger. I cannot stay. How do I leave? How do I return? If you do not recall how you were made, I cannot say how you can be unmade. Normally I would just... any like flicks his wrist <clears throat> um he waits as if expecting something to happen but then he just shakes his head and says I cannot unmake you then what am I to do I do not know people are in danger as we speak. Again, normally I would just command you to do something, but uh, you're different. I mean, I could tell you to uh, go pick up that pillow, but then I would just put you to work somewhere, but uh, that does not work. How am I to send you anywhere? Then you cannot help. I then suppose Tekka not. Closes his eyes and he lays down on the ground. Tekka can hear uh, the footsteps of the elf uh, getting a little closer, stopping next to him. Um. It's behind uh, his eyelids. Uh, um, everything is dark and he feels... There is this sense of emptiness to that darkness. Uh, this sense of disconnect. And uh, then a lingering sense of pain that washes over Tekka. Um, it comes and goes like waves. And then it becomes more intense. And Tekka feels that this pain is real. And he holds onto it. Until the moment when he opens his eyes and he's back on the ship. It feels like mere seconds have passed rather than minutes. Um, and the moment he exchanges a, a, a look with Nind, he knows that whatever he just saw, she saw it too. All right. Back on the broken wing? Oh. <clears throat> there are many broken wings on this ship now. Oh. <laughs> uh, all right. Ooh, this might it. be. <laughs> <laughs> I won. How'd you guys do? <clears throat> Think we're all fine, right? Could have been much worse. Three, really enough. Pontifex, you uh, were yes. the one who brought me back on my 
Thank you. Uh, not to bring you back, per se. It is more like a smelling salt you could... Uh, you know what, I will take it. You're welcome. <laughs> Is uh, is what allies do. <laughs> Take a nuts. Um, Talix, you are dealing with the, the surviving red beak. Uh, Brooke has helped bird. you. Hmm? Yeah, Brooke mm -hmm. has helped you to uh, take it below deck. Uh, is it still tied as you heal it? Yeah. Yeah, I tie it before I heal it. Okay, so it's, it's like it has uh, one, so. it has one leg like uh, tied to something, so it can't uh, uh, like take flight. Mm -hmm. Okay. Nor attack. Mm -hmm. It'll be out of reach. Yep. And you are, uh, what was it? Speak with animals. Yeah. Okay, da, 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 da. knowledge and awareness of these is limited by their intelligence. Uh, but okay. Apparently, these are pretty intelligent. Yeah, things. they are. Uh, all right. So, the the squawking of the uh, red beak you you have just healed, um, at first was just a noise, and then you begin to uh to perceive it as uh, um as words. Um, as uh, the the bird uh, is just uh, saying like over and over, let me go, let me go, let me go. I will, I will. I just want to ask you a couple questions first. I'll you, let you speak to your into my ears. Yes. But uh, you do not speak into my mind. Huh. You are not my master. I know. You are not like my master. Your masters, they speak to each other and you for their minds, right? Yes. No words. No sounds. Just thoughts. It's amazing. Here, uh, I'm going to get out some dried meats. Some fish or something for my pack and offer it to the bird. Um, the bird does not make an effort to reach for the food. It, uh, there, there is like this moment where you can see the instinct of like leaping towards it, trying to get it, but uh, um, it pulls at its rope and then instead of uh, reaching for it, it, it pulls back, uh, moves away from you. One of one of your people, one of your masters, they said they attacked us because we were in their river. Why, why do they not share the river? Why must they attack us? <laughs> hmm. Okay. This is where we hunt. It is our land. What is in it, it is ours. Can you tell me where... where you go home to after you finish hunting? Home moves. All the time. With the wind. Will you know where to return if I let you go? Yes. How do you know? The wind. Okay. <laughs> um, I don't know that Talos can think of anything else to say because I can't think of anything else to say. <laughs> um, <laughs> I 
Pip, it should be safe now. I will hold the rope. You just see Pip's head peeking over the edge of the crow's nest, and he he shakily gets to his feet and starts beginning to climb down. Uh, and it takes him a bit as he's still nursing his wounds, but eventually he gets to the point where there's no more rope anymore and, and just sort of reaches down towards Tekka. Tekka will help him now. You seem injured. <clears throat> Here, take some water, get some rest. They will not. I um. Yeah, he just gratefully uh, leans up against the side of the ship and just takes it slow. Talus will ask, um, "Do you know? Do you know if your master still lives?" Yes. Alex will try to describe the girl that he saw earlier briefly before she went invisible. Mm, no. Is that... Oh. That is oh, my master's master. Oh. Interesting. Alex is taking notes. <laughs> <laughs> but your own master, she left her... He or she... I feel in my heart that he lives. Can you still fly if I let you go? It looks like you've been cut somewhat badly. Ah, uh, the red beak uh, flaps its wings. Um, it, it's uh, it's clear that he uh, that he still has injuries, but. Uh, um, it doesn't seem like they will impede his flying. Perhaps it will just stop him from uh, stop it from flying for too long. Um, and as it tests, uh, its wings flaps them a few times without taking flight. Uh, um, says, "Yes, I am strong." Can you deliver a message to your master for me? Why should I? I just think I might have something. Maybe I have something worth giving him. Talix is unsure about this as he says that. It might be a <laughs> bit of a lie. Um, okay, Let, let's make the roll then. Okay. Okay, 17. You do not speak into my mind. But still, I have never heard someone speak into my ear. I will listen. Oh. Well, we have another one that can do that too. <laughs> but... Okay. In seven days' time... I would like to try to meet with your people again along the river, around the same lupus, around the same spot. That's all. I'll be here. Will you free me now? Yes. Please, just... Make sure they know that I have no intention of fighting them. I want... I want us to be friends. You can take this with you if you'd rather eat it at home. Um, oh, the food? Yeah. 
Okay. So it's will like offer to put it in his in their claw and then begin untying the rope. Okay. Um making sure there's a path that it can fly out. Mm hmm Yeah, as soon as the red beak is freed, um it hops forward, grabs with its talons the food that you have offered, and uh, uh, hops out of uh, um, through the exit. And everyone else can see just uh, this this enormous bird taking flight uh, um, and uh, moving away from the ship. He did that all under. The ship? Yeah. Well, I've learned many things. <clears throat> what did you learn? Well, something about the hierarchy of their, uh, of their tribe. And also that they're all, they all communicate telepathically. Okay. With one another. Very interesting. The birds included. I, uh... I want to take a chance to try to get to know these people. They're the one tribe that's been... so elusive. If we could figure out a way to understand and be peaceful with these people, I think... I think Ladari would be a lot safer for everyone. Did you make sure to put in a, that the bird is going to put in like a good word for us? <laughs> when they did come the best back? I, could. I did the best I could, but they're somewhat stubborn creatures. I gave it a, a gift and said that we were, you know, we would try to be peaceful. Yeah. But, uh, well, obviously. That whole encounter didn't go as smoothly as I was hoping it would. Yeah, what has become of these bodies? Um... Vizilin <laughs> would have been in the process of tossing him into the river unless somebody stops her? Yeah. Okay, uh... There's not... Uh, uh, it's a bad river, apparently, so... <laughs> Return to the land, return to the water. <laughs> yeah, it's not great. But what else do we do? Into the water they go. They go. Unless Tekka says something? No. Hmm. Um, I think Brooke killed one. I wasn't oh, keeping no. track. I think, I think Vazillian killed another. I, I killed, definitely killed one. I killed one bird, and he then I think I hit one of them. Bird. Wait, are you talking about the bandits? And I think I hit one. Pontifex oh, oh Pontifex, uh, Pontifex oh, yeah, killed yeah, one, that's right. I didn't kill a single person. <laughs> yeah, you just Birds are people, framed, too. Just framed everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Birds the first Pontifex did too. that to me with a bird. And I had to do it to them. Uh, Pip is looking over the tressum. Are the are the same letters on it? Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. There, it's it's covered in uh, um, in scratches, as if from like talons, but also like ah. Uh, 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 it, the the little circle thing, yeah, the little circle thing is on their that on their tentacles. <laughs> it's O T H. Talix. Yeah. We should speak with them. And he nods towards uh, the group at the front. They, too, have seen the one you sketched. Wait, how do you know? Because I've seen him. 
Oh when my. We fell during our. All right. Uh, so I guess Talix would like to call a group huddle. Uh huh. Let's do it. We can all okay. talk and kind of catch up with everything that's happened. Yeah. First of all, make sure everyone's okay. We can uh, talk to <laughs> yeah, any of our any of our crew. Uh yeah. I mean Vizilin is doing perfectly fine and, and in Theodomer, the like in the middle of just bandaging up their, their own injuries. Um they are far more fragile than pretty much any of you. Um they don't really have any armor. Uh so you you know they 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 got struck once twice and for them that was that was uh, uh, already a lot but uh, um, they are doing better compared to Tekka. Uh, it doesn't appear like either of them was um, like on, on the verge of death. Um, so you know during during this time they've just been like uh, um, managing up their wounds and just recovering, keeping uh, close. The ship no longer moving, just drifting a little bit backwards, uh, uh, but uh, slowly. Yeah. Uh, there came a moment where Zillian just threw out the anchor, uh, but it happened like after the fight. Uh. Alright. Um, Talix will also offer them food, though I'm sure they already have better food anyways. <laughs> just in case. You can take like a group short rest. Oh yeah, yeah. We talk about things maybe. This is like this is all gonna be a little short rest. Uh, right. Pip is going to ask the professor if he has like a vial of some sort, like a glass vial. I do. I surely just bought them. I have the jar of the the spice. Oh, can I put some blood in it? <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, and I have brewer's supply. I'm sure that there's totally like. Some yeah. Kind of glass container. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, sure. <laughs> Maybe that rather than the spike. <laughs> no questioning no it. <laughs> yeah, so they were, uh, recently has shown some sort of academic acumen with the stone. <laughs> uh, Pip sure, is fine. going to, to take it and uh, look around in that area where the leader of the Ataraba was and where the Tekka and and she had that spat and see if there's any blood of hers that Pip could find. <laughs> you know. Uh, yeah, normal. regular kid stuff. Normal mm -hmm. kid stuff. Roll a survival check. Oh my goodness. Alright. What? <laughs> Did you say why? <laughs> uh, no, I said what? <laughs> oh, I, I think I know... So I can Maybe. use it. <laughs> you know, it's just like, I just gave it a rule to even see if there would be anything else to find. And I said, what at my own rule? And I'm going to say, what at your rule? Yes. Um, yeah. It, um, Tekka's method of fighting doesn't really involve uh, uh, any kind of slashing weapons, but a uh, brook drew blood. And you find like that... A puddle, you know, still fresh. Um, mm -hmm. There is a lot of it. It was a very like, nice. <laughs> painful blow. Get as much as I can. You scrape it up, and you know, it's not like a lot of blood, but y you have I some. Just sort of use my other hand to try and, like, you know, brush it in. It's dirty. It comes with like the grime that was on the on the floor of the ship. Um, but. You have some of that uh, young teenage girl's blood. What? Why did you have to phrase it like that? <laughs> mm, here's some of that teenage blood. It's the best. Yeah. <laughs> the the mutilated mercury poisoning hasn't settled in yet. <laughs> Pip just like stoppers it up and puts it in his pouch. Okay. Adding teenage girl blood to my. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Anyways, <laughs> uh, so I guess we can get to the subject of the uh, of the dream that everyone had. Sure. So, okay, obviously Tekka can explain his whole dream. Mm-hmm. I, I, is there anything else that needs to be said? Uh, if, if is Tekka sharing like the entirety of his vision? Uh, yeah, I think he might not go into detail about the conversation he had, but definitely like the description of the room, like seeing the other two there. Seeing the tree. Are you going yeah. to mention that the man referred to himself as a god? Yeah. Um, yeah, I... Nind doesn't have a lot more to add to that. She, um, she'll say that, uh, she'll say, I, I saw that place. I, I saw that man, but it was all, uh, it was all just a moment. Like, I didn't get to talk to him. I felt like I wasn't really there. And then, just a second later, I blinked and I was back here. I wonder why you... Why you two didn't remain while Tekka did. Oh, that's His it. words... It seemed all that passed through are his creations. I was not. Nor was I. I don't think any of us that... Is it possible... That man... Is used to being the only real thing in that world. Maybe it's his dream. Not that I know anything about dreams. <laughs> 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 but from what I've heard... You make things up, right? Maybe that's why he would call himself a god? But when we... Oh... Nand, I, I should explain this. Uh, I've experienced the same thing as, as if someone else we've met. We've all met the same man. All in the same circumstances. Nain holds up her hand to her chest. She's still, she's still a little shaken by everything that went through. Uh, still struggling a little bit to catch her breath. Um, but she like slowly nods, just listening very, in, very intently um, to all of this. Do you no. know who he is? I uh, know. Uh, I've learned. Well, have you heard anything about the drow? Um, no. Look to Theodmer, does he have any reaction to that? Uh, he and also Resilian don't even seem to know what the word means. Um, I'd also say that that's a reasonably normal reaction. Um, yeah. none of you also knew. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. Uh, it's something, uh... Well... <laughs> something we were told about by Ralzir, Ralzir Gamir, actually. The, uh... The dragon? The dragons, yes. <laughs> uh, wow! They were a sort of people from a long time ago. A sort of elf, actually. Um, and Talos is going to kind of like lean in closer and look back to just the party. Like to Pontifex and to Tekka mostly. I might also have an idea as to uh, why only the people we've met have experienced this. Look to Brooke. Oh. What is it? Oh, 
Well, it's just a theory, but, uh... We'll have to talk about it later. My apologies. <laughs> huh. <clears throat> All right, later then. Nin seems slightly disappointed, but like doesn't push it. Worry. There's one secret I have to keep for now. Um, as Theodmer uh, speaks up, uh, uh, he has hardly ever really talked to you guys, besides when he absolutely needed to. Um, but yeah, he uh, he will address Talix and just sort of like the rest of the group, uh, as he says. I wouldn't ask you to share with us anything more. You saved my daughter's life. I am in your debt. Oh, it's no problem at all. I, I could never... I could never allow someone to come to harm needlessly. And That's why we're here on the boat. Right? Yes. I'm glad we could be of service to you. Least I can do is uh, get this ship moving again. Get you all safely to Simlielon. Um, are you well enough? Do you need any more healing? I'll be fine. You see him limping a little bit, but you know, he'll he'll make it if all the way to the spot. Over this break, I could take a bit of time and heal everyone. <laughs> <laughs> but you have to stand perfectly still <laughs> for ten minutes. Um, I'll be over here. As he um, uh, Zillion pulls the anchor back up uh, and he begins doing uh, uh, working his magic again, and the ship begins to um, fight against the current, no longer getting carried uh, <coughs> south, <coughs> and begins moving forward again. Uh, the ship is small enough that if you're like in the middle. And everyone else besides Theodmore is, 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 you know, close enough. Uh, um, wait, you're... What is I it, a prayer of healing? I have one second level spell slot left. I could do prayer of healing. Okay, if which everyone I... wants me to. Yes, please. <laughs> you used a... A sword to foot radius, so yeah. yeah oh, also, it's... <clears throat> yeah, yeah. I, I, don't, I don't know who's wounded anymore, but I can uh, choose six people, so... Oh, yeah. Pip's real messed up. Yeah, Tekka Pip. Uh, is Vasilian hurt at all? Uh, Vasilian isn't. Okay. So yeah, Tekka Pip, Brooke, um, and the two Janazi. And if there's anyone else, I can get one more person. If not, those, those five. All right. <laughs> Uh, hey, I have a question. Mm -hmm. uh, have we tested if Journal Fleetfoot is waterproof? Because <laughs> Talek's been diving into the river twice. Oh crap, I still have! <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> I forgot. I thought it was... I always assumed that... Yeah, okay. Uh, I like to imagine that? that's that's exactly Talix's reaction. <laughs> Just oh shit! Oh no! <laughs> um, uh, yeah, Talix will now frantically get out. He, I'd imagine like you know Talix left his backpack before he jumped into the water, so like all uh, the other paper no. he has. Uh, but uh, uh, but Jamiel is always carried on uh, on your belt. Um, like he has this little like leather strap specifically so it can be like kept out in the open. Uh so it can see. So yeah, it would have come with you in the water. Okay. Everyone can heal for seventeen, by the way. Oh my god. Seventeen? Uh, yeah, yeah, I rolled two sevens. Thank you. Yeah. Woo! Um so yeah, uh Talus will get him out and like start drying off the exterior on the sh on my shirt and mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, is uh, there? There is some water that has accumulated on the page, but despite on on the cover, but despite it being leather, it feels like it. Uh, um, 
well, despite, uh, uh, no water has been absorbed uh, in the cover. And as you pop it open, the, all the pages are perfectly dry. No ink uh, is uh, wet. Um, and the, the words that appear um, on the page you open it to um, are just the usual. Oh, apologies, Chamuel. I, in the moment, I, I just had to do something. Uh, that was what came to mind. Okay. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> um, well, that was something of a gruesome scene, wasn't it? Uh... Well, I'm glad you're okay. All right, thank you. Uh, Tekka, would you like to take Jamiel back? <laughs> Take a nuts. We'll try. That guy doesn't show her. <laughs> All right. Hold on. <laughs> Where did that come from? Well, <laughs> I said it was me, Dennis. <laughs> <laughs> out of context, out of context. <laughs> for what's worth, I think you smell lovely. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> is this actually happening? What? <laughs> Pip is running around with the, oh. the mechanical tressum in his hands, <laughs> having it flap up and down. <laughs> it's it's oh. it's still, uh, just collapsed in his hands, yeah. and he's just holding up Wait. the wings. Have we addressed this? <laughs> Where did he get that? <laughs> I brought it back. I... I claimed my victory. <laughs> I mean, he, he looks over to the crew members. Squeak, squeak. <laughs> <laughs> squeak, well, squeak. That's one more piece of knowledge they might not have been ready for, but... Uh... What is that? Did that mouse just talk? What? <laughs> it is a Ludorian mouse. Uh, S Squeak brought the... this, this mechanical cat, cat bird thing. It's got the same letters on it. Was it spying on us like those birds? Uh -huh. So we could probably expect more of these to show up soon. Well, oh, uh, well done, Squeak. Squeak. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I am impressed to see um, an awakened animal here. Oh, you've seen this sort of thing. Well, I. Though I cannot do it myself, I do know of uh, powerful wizards that can uh, um, bring about a spark of intelligence into animals. A spark? <laughs> I've got a fire of intelligence. <laughs> a raging fire of wisdom. And quite a personality. Yeah. Is that a... Is that an insult? <laughs> one's, uh, this one's granny is very talented, it seems. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, 
Um, this is like the... Uh, Theodomir's uh, uh, attitude towards the group has shifted a little bit, but despite like showing a genuine uh, um, moment of just curiosity, he does like goes back to focusing on keeping the ship on track. Vizilin is just very um, on edge, just looking frantically left and right, just making sure Pip no longer is on the um, appear, so she can finally <laughs> climb back up. <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> and she can reach up to the like to the to the broken rope, uh, um, and uh, take her take her place back up here. Yeah. Since Talix is a master rope worker, he'll try to uh, <laughs> clean that up a little bit, like retie knots and make it climbable. Oh yeah, um, if you want to to assist with repairing, you basically have to like. Um... <laughs> what? I said, wait, I've got an ending. Yeah, my mic didn't pick that up for some oh. reason. Oh. Yeah. Well, that would be ex so excellent. Thing. Otherwise, you'd have to, like, use all the rope to, like, tie them back together. But, yeah, mending um, is perfect in this case. Uh, these ropes have been just slashed clean through, so you can just reattach them where they were cut. All right. Wait a minute. Can I also mend the pieces of rope that I cut off? Ah, uh, yeah. As long as you have them. Uh, that 10 feet is gone, but I'll I'll reattach the bit that I cut for the bird. Yeah, you can do that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it takes a minute, so it's slower than a magician. But it's also, like, not a trick. Excuse me? What? Magic is real awesome. You're gonna tell me that magicians are liars? <laughs> <laughs> so sorry. Uh, no, 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 I've never insinuate such Those a thing. Writing words. <laughs> um... Mm. Is there any other conversation that you guys want to have uh, take place on the ship or anything you want to do for the rest of the journey? Well, Talix did want to talk later with us, right? Oh, yeah, he he did. Um, You guys can go, like, below deck if you want to have a moment of privacy. Yeah, I mean, if, if we can actually get us by ourselves. Yeah. There, uh, again, there is very little free space on this ship that wasn't really made to accommodate this many people. Uh, but you can, like, all be standing around and on top of crates and barrels. Uh, um, not exceptionally comfortable, but, like, you can all push yourselves into one corner of, like, below deck. What I was getting at was... Everyone that had that experience, when they were, when they were knocked out, they were always close to one thing. And I'm gonna nod at Rip again. When I went through that, the first thing I saw was Vakanov. Mm. Somehow, I think maybe. The spirit of that man is connected to Valkanoth or connected to that seed. <clears throat> well, uh, Pontifex, do you know anything about Drows fighting during the war on the side of Valkanoth or against Valkanoth? From what? Pontifex doesn't even know about the drought, does he? Didn't we? Oh, I thought that someone mentioned that. None of you knew about drow until... Oh. Um, yeah. Until... Um, Razil... No. Oh, God. The name is fading from my Razil memory. <laughs> um, Not even the professor is that old. Like, oh. yeah. Um, that is a bold statement. <laughs> The existence of Drow predates uh, the birth of Pontifex. And you also haven't read about it, right? Yeah, it's like That's to the point where... Point, yeah. It's one more thing for us to look into. One well, that's exactly at least good to keep in mind. Exactly how long ago the Drow disappeared, but it might be from... Maybe even from the early days of Akanoth. 
I mean, you would think that there is something written down if they were important for Vakanas, right? So surely, if that's the case, someone knows something. Well, not necessarily important, but just maybe his spirit. We all say that when our spirits pass, we return to Vakanoth. Maybe his spirit was trapped in the seed instead. And he's been there in a world of his own all this time. That's why he thinks he's his own god. I don't know, it's... Uh, this is all it's... very surreal. It's very similar to the lady we met a few weeks ago. She also didn't know what was really going on in the other world, right? Being in her little bubble. It did seem that way. Well, that's all I've got. Definitely interesting news, but we do need more, right? Oh, we've got a lot to look into. Uh, I don't know if I already mentioned this. I, I did tell you all that uh, I told the bird we'd try to meet meet with his people in a week's time. Where? Here. Around here. River along south the water? Of well, along the river. You're keeping a very busy schedule and you know that, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, but... This is a rare opportunity. Professor, you... Old Tecco, you... I mean, this is important, right? Talix, are we not on the run? Well, there's another thing. Uh, well, like I said before... I'm... I've written a letter. I'm gonna send it... Tabari and Thar. Oh. Uh, I, I want to try to arrange some sort of communication. I don't want us to be on the run from the Jade Council needlessly. Maybe we can just talk things out, you know? But I, I... It'll be under better circumstances than just wandering into Arya without any idea what's going on. I... I think I'm gonna tell him that I wanna read and wanna meet in Simlilon. And just you know, vouch for my my innocence and not implicate any of you. And whatever happens, you will have the seed. But uh hopefully what might happen doesn't happen, and everything will be fine. But and we are to ignore the possibility that uh, it goes poorly, they know what they are after, you do not have it, and now we are still on the run, but without you. Well... This seems unnecessary. If <clears throat> that happened, I would do everything in my power to help you in one way or another. Here's my f two cents. I think Telex knows the Jane Cons is the best, right? At least the current form of it. Yes, I think, think so. So, if you truly believe that there is a chance to get out of this, was talking. Then sure, we can give it a try. But if you think that the chances are low and you just want to do it for your... Well, for feeling better. Then that might not be the right approach. As I said before. You have to be sure, because if this fails, they will be after us anyways. I'm sure. 
I don't want to just run away from the problem. And to be honest, there's a lot that I want to know as well. We know so little about what's actually going on over in Florida. We don't know what actually happened with Gulborgok. Why do they think she killed the fox? We have some ideas, obviously, but... We haven't heard anything of... Well, their side. Just making assumptions. I can't... I can't in good conscience... Conscience. Carry on like that. Just based on assumptions. Thinking on the worst of the Jade Council? I want to know that I did, did everything I could to do things right. I have one concern, Alex. Mm. Your goal is to gather knowledge then that yes. is the goal of the Jade Council as well. What if they place this truth-speaking spell on you? What is your plan? Well, I never intended to lie in the first place, not really. But uh, that doesn't mean that I have to speak of things that they don't know about. I... I've used the spell myself. I know how it works. If they have anything else more than that, that could somehow... bring me to say... Hmm. Well, I don't know any of anything like that. <laughs> They seem powerful, dangerous. You are taking a great risk. Well, ultimately, we're all bound to the same God, and if I'm doing her will, I have faith that she will protect me. But I have to know that I'm doing her will. Right? I have to know that I'm doing things the right way. The best way. <clears throat> Say again, what exactly is the concern? Like, you're scared to tell details you're not supposed to say? Who are you asking? Yeah, both of you. Oh. that That's pretty much what his concern was that he raised, yeah. So. That's it. A Anyways. meeting will be out of our control. I mean... What if we do it on our terms in Simlilon? It's, it's Elven territory. They won't... They won't be able to bring an army there. Telex, why did you, when are you um, suggesting the meetup with the Jade Council? And how much time? Well, I haven't put a time frame on it, but I imagine such things will take some time to work out. Is it okay if we plan on spending some time in Simlilon? Probably. I might know of someone who can help stopping you or us from <clears throat> telling certain details we don't want to say but i don't know if they're around similarly long so we should wait for them i help her oh. to to protect me against certain magic i mean i'm not sure if they would protect you i'm not sure if they would help us but just keep in mind that once you 
if we if you want me to approach him then just keep in mind if he's willing to do it that afterwards he won't be able to talk about whatever he puts that thing on wait are you saying he'd make me forget about the seed not forget just not able to talk about oh That's, uh, that's powerful stuff. Sure is. That's why you have to be certain that you want to do it if you want me to contact them. That's a little scary, to be honest. Well, we have some time. You should think about it. It's uh, right around now when you hear uh, footsteps as uh, <clears throat> a nin climbs down below deck, uh, um, pokes her head through the room and says, Ah, oh, here you all are. Uh, we have arrived. <gasps> oh, that's wonderful. Oh, th thank you, Nind. Everyone, let's see the city. Will you need help unloading? Uh, well, I'm sure the Vizillion would appreciate it. I'm always happy to help. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, okay, all of you take your mini back to your... Mm. your uh, to your seat. By the way, friend, uh, Windsor, I don't know how long you have planned to go. Uh, we're ending this now. All right. Did he reveal and then stop? Ah, classic. <laughs> oh, you, you packaged the crew. Yeah, that's fine. We don't need them anymore. <laughs> no. We're done with them. Into the <laughs> this is going to be our next adventuring companion. They've lived out their usefulness. <laughs> I wanted to have one last time. We're being range. tailed. These no, people we're... are what's known as loose ends. They're not dead! <laughs> we're, yes. we're saving them as backup characters. <laughs> 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 oh, okay, so um, it is just before dusk uh, when, as you climb uh, uh, to the main deck, you see on the horizon towers. For Pepanteca, the site of the impossibly tall cylindrical buildings is itself uh, uh, already impressive, but what really takes your breath away is the fact that they are floating. The first sign of Simlielon in the distance is the four clusters of towers hanging weightlessly in the air, huddled together as if clinging to one another, utterly unaffected by gravity nor wind. More towers soon appear on the horizon, these ones built uh, on the ground, reaching up towards the sky. Uh, welcome. Uh, oh, oh. Oh, here it is. <laughs> oh. 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 <laughs> yeah, that oh. is normal. In fact, I would be offended if they weren't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, this is where we're gonna call the session. <laughs> nice. All right. Exciting. Yo. Oh man. Oh, we got this. Which one of these is the dream tree? Is it this one? Is uh, this one? Kind of outside. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it's this way. That Taking one. all bets. Nope. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> nope. Yeah. Put your, <laughs> put your finger right up. Yep. You got it. <laughs> all right. Oh, well, great session. <laughs> uh, oh, good. Good to hear. I hope you had fun. Um, yeah. And yeah, we can continue this uh, next Sunday, maybe earlier. 
Let's talk oh, about it. Levels. I was looking at it from the wrong side. Yeah, yeah, it's multi. -tier. Slightly. Yeah. It's not as uh, hilly as uh, um, Arya was. We've also got no music for this. Wait. Yeah. Uh, did you say no music? No music. New music. Oh, okay. Music. Yeah, every settlement this, so what far. What is this big ominous black tower? <laughs> it's probably fine. <laughs> it seems to be leaning in one direction. Is it? That's normal. Oh, I guess I it's, just, no, it's just like No, slanted. it's just it's built. Like a, uh, yeah, like one side is slanted. Yeah. Uh, cool. Yeah, all right, let's... Bye, stream. <laughs> yeah, <Bye>. sorry. <laughs> There's a car alarm. <laughs> There's a car alarm going out outside. Session 21. <laughs> Woo. Yay. Next session. Happy New Year. And next session what? Next session is 22. Ooh. Which means prepare your Taylor Swift, everybody. We really missed out on making the first session being session 22. Well, I'm sorry. Okay. Well, I mean, you know. I'm pretty sure it's not your fault. We we should have uh, we should have played on in twenty sixth. <laughs> True. We can't yeah, we can't play until <laughs> until February twenty second. <laughs> all right. Well. <laughs> okay. See you all soon. Bye. Bye. Yeah. Bye. See you. Bye, -bye everyone.